It's official. Windows 11 is here. But what's new? What's not there? And is it worth downloading? Paul's got his review. We'll also get first impressions of the Surface Pro 8. Office 2021 is now out. The pricing is actually pretty clever. And Microsoft reveals the Xbox Series X is going to be delayed until next year, too. Uh, it's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 745, recorded Wednesday, October 6th, 2021. Bloomberry Compote Swirls. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by IT Pro TV. The IT world needs cybersecurity more than ever, along with qualified people to fill its roles. Get your cybersecurity certs with IT Pro TV. Visit itpro.tv slash windows for an additional 30% off all consumer subscriptions for the lifetime of your active subscription when you use the code WW30 at checkout. And by Melissa. The U.S. Postal Service processes more than 98,000 address changes every day. Is your customer contact data up to date? Try Melissa's APIs in the developer portal. It's easy to log on, sign up, and start playing in the API sandbox 24-7. Get started today with 1,000 records cleaned for free at melissa.com slash twit. And by PlexTrack, the powerful yet simple security management platform that helps you get the real cybersecurity work done. With PlexTrack, you'll streamline your assessments, analytics, and reporting. Visit PlexTrack.com slash twit and claim your free month. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we talk about the latest news from Microsoft. It might be a little bit this week. Mary Jo Foley is here from ZDNet. I'm all about Microsoft.com. Paul Therott from Therott.com. Good to see you, too. Uh, are you a little hungover from yesterday's massive Windows 11 <laughs> I am, party? Actually, I have been in a steady state of stress for a couple of days now. And I was oh. just thinking about that right before we started. I'm like, why am I so stressed? Well, no, it, I don't remember when this happened, but at some point in the pandemic last year, probably, I guess, I, 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 I know I talked about this. Like all of a sudden during some random off period, it just seemed like a lot was going on. You know, and I was getting a lot of email and a lot of this and a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, hey, Paul, did you get my email? Hey, I'll give you every response. You know, that kind of stuff. And like the past <laughs> few days have been like this. And because, you know, Windows 11 has happened, the new Surface devices have happened. But the rest of the world apparently decided they were going to do a bunch <laughs> of stuff around the same time, too. And I'm getting yeah. hit by PR from like every angle imaginable. And it's like, guys, just give it a couple of days. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, and then, and like, then the I asked you about the eighth grader this morning. And I think I threw you over the edge, didn't I? What's the eighth grader? What's yeah, yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's Paul that? and I got really cute emails from from a kid who's in the eighth grade Aww. who's yeah. doing a project and wanted to ask us some computer questions, none of which I knew. So I said, Paul, you're going to answer Oh, my God, name. that was me. <laughs> Just, I just want to say this up front. I do not respond to email like that at all. <laughs> I, so I, I get that question. Either, but I, was I like, get that all the time. Like a, yeah, I so, feel like his. I other, feel like this was real though, not okay. something yeah. pretend. Because sometimes I feel like it's anything. it's lazy. Yeah, it's some lazy yeah. kid wants me to write their paper for them. Basically, no, this was that different. Could, okay, this was different. That oh, that's cute. But no, this it yeah. seemed legit. And the other thing that happened yesterday was I had. I'll just say I don't think they'll mind me t saying this. I, I had uh, two meetings scheduled yesterday afternoon, and um, it turns out both of them were scheduled for the same time. Oh, and it turns out they were both from with the same company. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's like, guys, no wonder like, you were I'll confused. Accept part, I'll accept part of the blame yeah. on this one. Um, but yeah, no wonder you were confused. Well, don't be stressed, Paul. It's just Windows 11. Exactly. I got to say, but I th seriously think about this, both of you. When was the last day <laughs> on the client side that we had a day this big for Microsoft, right? <laughs> Where not only is it a major new version of Windows with, you know, granted, no launch event at all or whatever, but also, a whole bunch of new Surface devices coming out, you know? Um, uh, I can't think review. of a day like this. I mean, in a long, it's, long time. It's just, this is how, this is the life of the Apple reviewer, however. Yeah. <laughs> they, no, and I, it, almost oh, yeah. always with uh, with Google's Pixels, too. They, you know, the phone comes yeah. out at the same time as a new operating system. The MacBook well, yeah, but comes here, out with a new the big Mac OS. 
you're right. You're right. So, but here's the thing. I, the difference between us and them, if you will, <laughs> is the, di <laughs> the difference between us and those people is that event hasn't even finished when they're already having rumors about the next version coming out in a year. Well, that's true. And they're already talking about the next <laughs> Apple event that's in November. And <laughs> like, this is for us, there's no next thing in no, well, actually Ignite's coming, <laughs> Ignite's coming. But I mean, as far as yeah. this kind of thing, like there's not more Surface devices coming out in November or whatever. Like this is the big This is going to be it for a while, yeah. right? Yeah. No, there yeah. is one more that I'm holding out hope for, which you know, uh -oh. Surface Duo 2. Surface oh, Duo no, right, 2. Right, right. Well, that's I mean, coming really in a couple of weeks. That's not, yeah. a, that's right. not yeah. like a surprise. I canceled my marriage. No. Don't yell at me. But you I did? Canceled you canceled it. yours? Yeah. yeah. Well, we got the news that uh, the Pixel 6 is coming out on the 19th, and I, I really know. have to buy that. I and have I, to buy that too. And I know that that's going to be my <laughs> default Android device. I already have too yeah. many Android devices. I have the flip yeah. phone, hmm. the Z flip, hmm. and I have. So I thought, you know, I'm going to let Mary Jo review the be Duo 2 and tell me if yeah. it's good. That is okay. the politest push in front of a bus I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours, so, Mary Jo. Take it. No, anyway. so no, so Microsoft <laughs> came to me a, a week or two ago and they said, "Do you want to review the Surface oh, Laptop good. Studio oh. or the Surface Pro 8?" And I said, "No. I don't want to review either one. I want Duo. to review the Surface Duo 2." Yeah. And they said, "Yeah, we'll see. Maybe, yeah, oh. maybe." <laughs> They're not sending it out, I guess. They haven't sent them out yet, but when I'm just the, holding out hope. When does that come out? What's the release 21st. date? 21st. Was it October yeah. 21st? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, no, I just I felt like I wouldn't be a good reviewer for those other two because what am I going to run on it? Notepad, like right. with Surface Laptop Studio, right? Like, come on. <laughs> but this is why this is called teamwork. This is why it takes yeah. a village yeah. to review the Surface line. Uh, yeah. We got Paul here, who's going to take the brunt of the of the weight of the Surface reviews for us. Mary Jo yeah. can do the duo, yeah. um, and all three of us will look at Windows 11 and smile. And that'll yes. be it. <laughs> we'll be done. We smile the way we yeah. smile at a trouble kid in the McDonald's yeah. who's making Isn't a little cute? too much noise. Yeah. It would be cute <laughs> yeah. if it weren't in, yeah. you know, interrupting smile my happy meal. We, yeah. Maybe we'll take this one to go. Isn't it ironic? Mm, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So you're stressed. I understand. This is a tough time of the year for Paul. I understand. Yeah. Um, I was bored yesterday myself. Really? <laughs> because, Jesus. no, because I'm oh, in the opposite boat of Paul, right? So I had already written my one piece that I was going to write on Windows 11 um, before running it. So like, you know, here's how to get it. Here's all the things readers want to know. And then I just sat around and waited around. I'm like, yeah. And I read everybody else's reviews because I'm like, I have nothing else to do right now because I'm not okay, reviewing so devices. I, I have in the past 24 hours lashed out at my friends for sending t too many texts during the day, all these jokes going back and forth. And I'm like, guys, does anybody else work? And by the way, this is why I want you all to go back to the office. This is exactly it. <laughs> now you're all home and you're all got plenty of time to screw around. And it's like some of us have been doing this for a long time and we got stuff to do. You know? Okay, now I feel really I bad because I, I was, like, oh I was God, what adding was to your stress. <laughs> you know, like, I was adding to your stress And here's an eighth grader, yesterday. Paul, who really needs you. <laughs> right, exactly. and that person I'm going to reply to politely. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He'll learn about the vicious realities of, of the real world soon enough. <laughs> sure. Soon enough. No sure. need to like advance that knowledge. Sure. All right, well, where do you want to start? You want to start with 11? Yeah. yeah why not? Okay. I think we should. Goes to 11. So uh, I forgot that my big machine at home was in the Insider program. So I got, oh boy. I didn't, I just, I, I only log into Windows like once a month to get the updates. So I logged in and mm -hmm. said, Windows 11 is here. And I thought, oh, is it? Because this was Monday. I said, oh, is it early? Right. And I did it. And then I realized, oh, that's still the beta. But I checked the box now that says once the final. Which channel? Oh, yeah. But which channel are you release in Release preview. Or were you? I was in release preview. Oh, release preview. oh that's great. Okay. So, so you're that's getting, like you're, it, you're, right? Now you're on the stable track. Yeah. So then I said, you know, that's it for that. Um, it's fine. It's nice. It doesn't really change my life in any way nope. at all. I was a little worried. Oh, maybe my because <laughs> really I just game on it, and no, so I thought um, well, maybe my game won't work. But no, it worked fine. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I broke this, Linux. Don't take this the wrong way. In, in some ways, Windows Eight, uh, Windows Eleven is a little bit like Windows Eight in that. We, we kind of get lost in the, oh, look, it's new and round and centered and stuff. And we we 
we're not aware as aware of some of the major gains that have been made behind the scenes a little bit. Like Windows 8, what was lost in Windows 8 was they improved File Explorer pretty dramatically in that release. Oh, and there were other okay. things, you know, productivity yeah. enhancements. Yeah. So you're thinking there's things I just, uh, I'm just not seeing them. Right, right. So I, I look, I, I, obsessing over this as I do, I, you know, in the wake of last week's show, I went back and I did rewatch that entire video where they announced Windows 11 back in June, made notes about what they said was going to be in it. Um, we can talk about the stuff that's not in it later, but... You know, looking at it, it, it's interesting to me. Like, I, I think it looks fine. Like, I like it. I, I prefer it visually, I guess, to Windows 10. I do, too. It's but pretty. The big, yeah. Yeah. The the big thing to me, it's, it, it, it feels a little, everything's a little bigger, you know? Like, the scaling is, uh, like, 110% or something. Like, it's, like, the taskbar is bigger. Yeah. You know, the, every, it's got that aspect to it. Yeah. If you look at the contents of, like, a File Explorer window, the same window on Windows 10 versus... Windows 11 and Windows 10, everything fits, no problem. You know, 10, 15 items, whatever. Windows 11 is like, like big text, you know, goes <laughs> down off the board. It's just, everything's bigger. And so, you know, whatever, almost 55, that's good for me. It's, it's good. Um, but the thing I think that's most interesting about Windows 11, and I, I, I really just don't want this to get lost in it, is they made some really nice productivity slash uh, multitasking gains in this release, which I think are important and really good. And I mentioned, I think I mentioned it last week, but there's that docking undocking experience, which is magical, that works wonderfully. Uh, the new Snap features like Snap layouts, Snap groups, awesome. You know, some uh, subtle improvements to things like desktops and so forth. Um, it, it's these are just little. This is the type of stuff I love. Like. You know, when they were coming out with creator updates for Windows 10, it was like, what is this not? 3D, whatever. What? It, like, to me, that never made any sense. But these are, um, you know, like bread and butter type of improvements. Um, That's important, actually. Yeah, that I think are important. And I think yeah. sometimes, you know, we lose Quality that. of life imp improvements. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of inconsistencies. There's a lot of stuff missing. You know, we'll get to that. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, that still needs to be fixed for sure. You know, little missing or uh, just uh, regressions, I'll call them. But you know, that the multitasking stuff is is fantastic. Did you and, see you know, the a, uh, the thank you from Microsoft? Mm -hmm. The thank you, from Microsoft. Mary Jo's here. from to Windows Insiders. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, working on this is incredibly humbling, and honestly, it makes me a little emotional. When it's more than a billion people, it cannot be just one language, just one culture. Sometimes you have to take a step back because maybe something you thought was true turns out not to be true. She's a user's researcher who has zero spectrum, books or furniture uh, in her home. Bring that into was that interesting. Discussion. Oh, he's in the same house. I guess they live together. Those blind spots from your product design. It's been a here, journey, a really long journey. We've taken a lot of time to incorporate feedback from people. This is so much better than the Windows 11 ad. I think listening to people is probably <laughs> the most important thing. This is like thing. much, much better. Yeah, but like we do there's get no, a lot of feedback from the Windows You know there's not an iota of feedback in this product, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I mean, not to be a jerk about it, but and there is no feedback. Because of the strong today. feedback we had like, from Windows Insiders, who we really love. <laughs> I can't get rid of this thing. I need, <laughs> I need to give you some feedback, YouTube. I don't know what this win picture in picture is. Go away. So there's, uh, if you're using a desktop browser, there are... Um, ad blockers that can get rid of those. Oh, God, I shouldn't have to use mm -hmm. special software. But if you're using like a mobile device of some yeah. kind, there's no way to get rid of that stuff. Oh, God. No. So anyway, uh, that was a thank you to Windows Insiders for all yeah. the feedback, all the input. You made Windows 11 We better. promise we'll get to it someday. Thank you so much <laughs> yeah. for sending that you, all in. No, really, Literally haven't on. looked at anything. Do you really think that they, no input was, was needed Not or taken? Positive. Yep, yeah. 100%. How would you know, though? I mean, because nothing has changed, Leo. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's yeah. not because if you go and look at all of the issues that people are reporting, none of it has none effect, of it's affected the product. Yeah. The the number, you know, the top items of feedback about Windows 11 are all those things that are they you know they took away that are unfinished. How come I can't move the taskbar yeah. around? How come I, yeah. when I right click mm -hmm. on the taskbar, there's nothing there? How come when I look, right click on the recycle bin, it's a different menu than when I right, right click on the desktop? Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, is fixed in the dev uh, channel bill or in the dev channel now. Th this feedback will be will hit Windows 11. Mm -hmm. It's going to hit it now, Later. going forward in future yeah. updates. <laughs> um, of course, I mean, of course it will. And 
you know, I'll, I'll this say, is you know, part like, of the you know. adventure. We're on the adventure now. It's going to be fun. Every every week or two, we'll get an update. And suddenly, <laughs> the the trash can right context menu, right click menu, will look the same as the rest of the of the, and it'll just we'll just be. And every week, Paul will have something to talk about. Oh look! Oh look! They I, fixed way, this. A, you have an incredibly positive life outlook, which I wish I could share. Yes. But I, yes. I, you're right. I mean, you are right. Like I. Uh, the next year, I see. I look. I, I, I it is unprecedented. Uh, not just to me. It is literally unprecedented for Microsoft to ship something three months after they started publicly testing it, like a Windows release. But yes, uh, the next year will be interesting because between now and say a mid year next year, whatever, um, we're going to get all that stuff they talked about. That you know, and we're going to see the results of feedback. I, I and. On kind of a background sense, I mean, it's not like I can quote a specific person from Microsoft, but having talked to Microsoft about this, um, they are aware of this feedback, you know. Mm -hmm. And there are things like um, like the default app interface, which I think we can all agree is a malicious terribleness. That how the heck did that ever happen? They react Wait. with surprise to the complaint, you know. Do you think they're going to change that? Because I don't. They said, <laughs> yeah, that they were, you know, going to look at it. <laughs> Yeah, they're not. They're not because, no, you know why they're not? This is how you get people to use Bing and Edge, and that's all they really care right there, right? Well, yeah. So, look, I, I, the problem is this who hurt really? The, the people that go in there and, and just want to make the switch can't. And the people who, like, you know, yeah. say you want to use Mozilla Firefox, right, or Brave, mm -hmm. those browsers mm -hmm. have already worked around this thing. And right. if you click set default, they become the default. And that's neat. Yeah. Um, so the user doesn't have to know that Microsoft is doing something a little suspicious behind the scenes. Um, and that that's fine. But, you know, where else is this happening in the system, right? We're, we're talking about web browsers right now, right? They didn't just mm -hmm. change that system for web browsers. They changed it for everything. Right. So. And we'll see. I, the thing just came yeah. out, what, two days ago or one day ago. Um, so we'll see. Can I ask you a question? I'm super curious because every time you bring the, some of these issues up, I, I feel like, but it's like, it's exactly what happened with Windows 10, right? Like Windows 10 came out, it comes out, <sighs> p, it cons, some consumers install it, then they keep yeah. patching it with cumulative updates and things change gradually. I feel like Windows 11 is going to be the exact same thing, right? No. Am I wrong? No, actually, if anything, they're going to patch it much more quickly, right? Yeah. Uh, because now the system in place where they can update the OS without having to ship a, oh, a, an OS up, right? So I, right. The, okay. the, the difference here is when Windows, you know, I told you the PC makers, one of the PC makers had told me that, you know, the nice thing about Windows uh, 11 is that Windows 10 is great. So the fallback plan is fine. Yeah. With Windows 8, mm -hmm. it was kind of an emergency. They had to get past this. So right. Windows 10 had to be really good right off the bat. Um, by the way, uh, October 1 to July was how long they tested that thing, right? Not mm -hmm. July mm -hmm. 1 to October 5 or whatever. I mean, it, it much longer release cycle there. But I was very happy about Windows 10 because it mm -hmm. was a return to this kind of desktop-centered computing. They obviously mm -hmm. went off the deep uh, off the deep end with right. the previous release. Yeah. Um, Windows 11, the bar is a little lower because Windows 10 is fine. Right. Yeah. So if you mm -hmm. feel really strongly about the things I complain about, uh, you can stay on Windows 10 and you can have your little right click stuff and, you know, <laughs> whatever. It has its inconsistencies yeah. for sure. I mean, uh, that's been a complaint uh, on Windows yeah. 10, but it's uh, it's stable and it's there. And mm -hmm. yeah. so if you're not ready for Windows 11, don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Steve and I were talking about this yesterday. It seems like a new way of software kind of crept up on us. Which is, yeah. and it started with gaming, which is you would release it knowing that it's not done, essentially. Mm -hmm. Knowing mm -hmm. it's kind of, it's, bu it's buggy is too strong a word, but it's just not done. It's always in beta. Google started that, didn't they? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Gmail is, is probably still Everything in beta. Everything is always in beta. It's always uh, unfinished. Maybe that's where it started. Google, you're right. And that, it's, just, and that, it's just kind of a new way of thinking about software. You can excuse doing it because Google makes online services. And when they make a fix, yeah. it, everything's fixed at once. Mm -hmm. uh, when Microsoft makes a fix to Windows, uh, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. You know, because people will or will not install it and, you know, it takes a while. Mm -hmm. It's a different, yeah. this is the, 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 applying this methodology to a client, not just a client software, but to really complex. To a platform. platform. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Everything relies yeah. on Windows. Basically. Yeah. But part of the work of the past two years, uh, changing Windows as a service into something that maybe makes a little more sense, was putting those systems in place where they can update more easily. I, this is really, I mean, they don't want to use the term anymore because I think it's kind of poisoned. But really, today is Windows as a service. Windows 11 yeah. is Windows as a service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. More so than Windows 10. Because yeah. now everything's... You know, the infrastructure is there to hopefully make it work. Right. I think, though, the anyway, process, I the process um, where the first people who are going to adopt are consumers, right? It's not businesses. So consumers will adopt it. They'll find out about any um, egregious things that they didn't already discover. They'll fix those. They'll keep doing cumulative updates. And maybe in a couple of years, businesses will start going to Windows 11, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. That'll yeah. be the same that's, process. Okay. Yeah. It's fine. I mean, I, I and yeah, I, 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 it's hard to put my mind in the place of an average user, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Elite, Friday, obviously, but you know, will the things that I and other power users kind of complain about impact nor so-called normal people? I don't know, but the problem is, I you know, Windows has such a diverse user base, and it goes back right. so far in time. We're all a little muscle memoried up right now. And I think when yeah. people click or click or open something and what they expect isn't there, it's a moment of confusion. But Windows 8 sent that yeah. off into the stratosphere. I, it, I, <laughs> that's, that yeah. release was famous for normal people being like, what is what is going on here? What is this thing? Yeah, yeah. That was the wrong thing to do to consumers. It was. But let's, it was. let's go back to earlier this week before Paul got ground down. Because in your because <laughs> in your review of Windows 11, you 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 yeah. like it, right? I feel like it. And this is the, I don't know if it's a paradox or whatever, but I do like it. I, I give Microsoft credit for trying to make the hard decisions that a company, anytime you try to simplify something as complex as Windows, right? Windows has been uh, criticized over the years for having too many different ways to do too many different things. And so in this release, they're trying to be visually consistent. They're trying to simplify it. I'm sure they looked at every single command that's available in every single menu and said, how, how can we strip this down so that it's not too much information, but still retain, retain the essential, you know, Windowsness of Windows. And I think they went a little too far. Um, and I have ideas. I mean, I, I, you know, one of the things when I think about, you know, I made a list of like, you know, what are the things I would fix in Windows 11? You know, what I end up at the end is something I don't think they'll ever do, which is something I've frankly been calling on them do, to do for years. And mentioned when Windows 10X was the thing that was going to have this UI and we figured it would be coming to big windows. Let people switch between the two. Better yet, mm -hmm. have a really granular dashboard of some kind where power users can say, yes, 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 no, 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 and and, uh, and have the UI that you want. Um, that kind of thing is a support nightmare um, for Microsoft and probably for a lot of IT departments. Obviously, they could restrict its use through you know policy, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I think we're at the point now where you can't make Windows too simple because too many people are too used to how it works. Mm. And you have to be careful where you draw the it's line. Funny. That's, you know, like that's said, what Michael Muchmore said in PC Magazine. Windows 11 needs a Windows 10 mode. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's probably not a very <laughs> unique idea. But I mean, it's especially as a power user, I think when you come to Windows 11, you start right-clicking and clicking around. You're like, what, what, you know, hmm. where is everything? Well, and then it's not the, I mean, what, what is it? XP had a classic mode? It's not a new yeah. idea. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seems like a good idea. Uh, yeah. That helps people transition. On the other hand, you don't want to have too many... It's The part of the simplification is not having too many <laughs> places Additions you can change and, it. Yeah, you know? I know. I was thinking ISVs, too. They don't want that, right? Like if you're designing software, you don't want to be, oh, right. maybe somebody will use it this way or this way, right? right? You, it's tough on them, not just IT. It's got to be I, opinionated. I if you make operating systems, I'm afraid yeah. it's important to be opinionated. And this is the hard decision <laughs> thing, right? There are components yeah. in Windows 10 or 11 today that date back to the 90s because there are certain bits of software that rely on that thing being part of Windows. Even though no one really mm -hmm. uses it or uses it directly, yep. you you have this legacy gunk. And, uh, you know, the visual stuff is something we all see. So it's easy to be like, oh, look, that thing's ugly or it's pretty or it's, you know, simpler, or it's more complex, whatever. But, um, you know, if it impacts your workflow every single day, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, you risk alienating people. And at some point, if it's too different, 
then people say, well, they'll say, well, I have to transition this. Why don't I just use a Mac? Why don't I just use Linux? Why don't I just use Chrome OS? Yeah. Hmm. I take, well, let's take I, a break. I, I, I do like Paul it. needs I, I, I to like get it. some sort of, uh, I don't know, yeah, beta blocker in there or something. I don't know. But, CBD. Uh, <laughs> CB, little CBD <laughs> from Paul. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, I'm going to also ask you, Paul, I'm, I'm, uh, we're getting a little clipping on you. Uh, I think when okay. other people talk, I hate to do this to you, but can you go in the settings on Teams? Uh, is noise um, suppressed? It's called noise suppression. Is that turned off? Yeah. I turned it off. Let me look. It is off. Okay. Um, yeah. JT is, you know, we're talking with JT in the in the uh, chat room. Is there any echo cancellation or anything like that? What it's doing is, it sounds like it's gating. When I start talking or Mary Jo starts talking, you get ducked. And as a result, no, it's, it's going. Um, so I don't think I, it's actually no, the, the the microphone settings in Teams are very limited. Beyond, yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, it's fine. Um, I'll, I'm just going to have to avoid talking over you. Because or just talk over me, because honestly, I talk too much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine if, yeah, if you're alone, it's just when uh, we both talk at the same time, it kind of goes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <clears throat> All right, let's take a break. When we come back, more, more Windows 11. <laughs> There's still yeah, a lot to talk about, lots, frankly. A lot to talk about. Uh, I'm actually, but see, I don't use it as deeply as you do. I'm very, yeah. just on this, like probably you and me, Mary Jo, we're just using, you know, on the very, surface, it's fine. Yeah. Yep. It is. I mean, the lowercase surface, it's fine. It's good. I like it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, our show today brought to you by IT Pro TV. This is every year, Cybersecurity Month. Cybersecurity, of course, is one of the most important parts of IT. It's also a great field to get into if you want to get into IT. You know, IT is a lot of things. It's desktop support, you know, the person who comes to you and, you know, helps you get your Windows 11 installed. It's it's a network, setting up networks. It's uh, the person who pulled the plug on Facebook on Monday. <laughs> it's uh, And it's, of course, the most important job, cybersecurity, keeping the enterprise safe from ransomware and malware and all that stuff. We need cybersecurity more than ever. And in fact, there are millions, literally more than a million jobs open right now. For cybersecurity IT experts, you get your cybersecurity cert with IT Pro TV. That is a great path to success. Visit itpro.tv slash windows right now. And you can, we'll give you some a special deal. You can find out all of the great reasons why IT Pro TV is a place to learn IT. Whether you're getting started or you just want to improve your skills, you're already in IT, maybe you want to get certified or recertified. Learn IT, get certified for the many IT jobs of the world. They got seven studios in their Gainesville, Florida uh, uh, headquarters, and they're running. I mean, they're not just sitting there. 5,800 hours total of on demand IT training. So I don't know if it's because Halloween's in October that they made uh, the spooky month of October be Cybersecurity Month. Maybe this month is jam packed with events focused on cybersecurity. Check out the webinar. Coming up tomorrow, 10-7, it'll be recorded, so you, if you miss it, you can watch it later. But it's good if you can be there because you can ask questions. Protecting against mobile security threats in a BYOD environment. Spooky. There'll be a webinar Halloween-themed on October 28th. Uh, I guess that means costumes. I don't know. Where, you don't have to wear one, but I think maybe uh, Don and the crew will be. CyberSec Incident Response <clears throat> for Small Businesses. Uh, the subtitle of this is Avoiding the Nightmare on Main Street. Find out more at itpro.tv slash webinars. Uh, on the 14th of this month, the panel discussion, 5 p.m. Eastern. Again, something you want to be there for live, but you can watch it later. Uh, Dirty Little Secrets of a Cybersecurity Career. <laughs> Find out what it's like to actually work in cybersecurity. Three security uh, IT security experts will be on the panel, moderated by Don Pizzette. Uh, there's more information on that on the IT Pro TV YouTube channel. And then to top it all off, there's a whole free weekend on the 23rd and the 24th as a special uh, for this month's themes. Th these are the courses that will be part of the IT Pro TV free membership. Again, the 23rd and 24th, CompTIA Security Plus, 
The Certified Ethical Hacker cert. I love this. I want this cert. CompTIA's CISA Plus. Uh, you know, all CompTIA stuff have pluses. And uh, CISSP, CISP. IT Pro TV has the best teachers. They're experts in the field, but they call them edutainers because they make it fun and interesting. Uh, I know you're already interested in IT. That's why you listen to our shows. But IT Pro TV is, is a really great way to prepare for the tests. Uh, they get content from these studios running all the time onto the into the library in 24 hours. So they're always up to date. Everything is divided up into 20 to 30 minute chunks. There's searchable transcripts. It really couldn't be easier. And you can watch it on any device. Uh, computer, of course, they've got mobile apps, Chromecast, wh whatever works for you. Um, official, what else can I tell you? Official training partner for CompTIA. So those are the, that's the cert, you know, those are the certs everybody wants to start with for sure, like the A plus cert. Uh, best place to learn any CompTIA cert. And of course, on your own schedule, because they know, you know, you got a busy life. The world needs qualified cybersecurity professionals more than ever. Get your cybersecurity certs with IT Pro TV. Go to itpro.tv slash windows. Now here's the deal. 30% off all consumer subscriptions for the lifetime of your active subscription. As long as you stay active, you never pay that extra 30%, but you got to use the code WW30. See, this is how they figure out that you saw this on Windows Weekly. So please, itpro.tv slash windows and offer code WW30 for an additional 30% off the lifetime of your active subscription. IT Pro TV. Build or expand your IT career and enjoy the journey with IT Pro TV. All right. Back to the pity party that is Windows 11. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. No, it's good. It's good. It's good. We love it. It will um, only get better. <laughs> it, I, like I said, I'm with, I'm with Mary Jo because... I, I maybe I'm a superficial guy, but it looks great. <laughs> I like the new menu. Uh, I don't you mind a little freshness. The Wall Street Journal, Joanna Stern called it Windows 10.5. That's how I feel it is. That's what. Yeah, that's what that's I fair. think about it. We've said that yeah. all, all along. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, I, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, lipstick on a pig. It's just a fresh coat of paint. It's like actually, yeah. there are some really nice productivity enhancements yeah. in here that I think yeah. people need to pay attention to. So. Uh, is there anything special you'd have to do? Could you, if you just go to Windows Update, will you get it if your machine is compatible? Oh, here comes Sirachi. <laughs> Hello. Um, Hello, cat. It, it's, yeah, they say that people can get it. I, I don't know that I've... I would have thought I would have heard from someone who might have gotten it that way. I mean, obviously, they're going to limit its availability right in the beginning, you know, like they always do. Yeah. They act like they're yeah. geniuses doing this. But, yeah, I mean, it makes sense, right, too. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know what qualifies. It seems like anybody with an eighth gen or newer, you know, compatible hardware should just get it. But it's 100% so, hardware, com, you know, compatible. I'll read you the story posted into our Discord chat by Jarno G or Yarno G. I installed Windows 11 on my Surface Pro 7 yesterday. That should that's compatible, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Windows Update said I could do the upgrade, but didn't offer it. Then I got the upgrade assistant, which took ages to tell me it. Errored and couldn't upgrade. So I tried the media creation tool, which wouldn't upgrade, but could do a clean install. So I did the clean install, after which the touch screen didn't work anymore. So I had to find a mouse to finish the installation. Then the installation was done, and it was installing all the drivers through Windows Update. The sound on the screen got all messed up several times in different ways until it eventually got stuck in some grayscale, high contrast, something that was mostly unusable. After another restart, everything was fine, though. So now I'm a happy Windows 11 user, I guess. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but for those no, who so you, are a little less insane, maybe wait a while. <laughs> right. That's what they tell you, right? They're like, when you should wait, oh. unless there's some really compelling reason, you should wait until you see a note on Windows Update that says, okay, we're offering you the upgrade. Because if you don't, you you could get it like this guy you just described in the, in the Discord. But... I'm not going to rush and Don't get rush. this on my Surface Laptop 3. Why would I? Like, let them iron out all the kinks, and then I'll get it when it's time. And That's what you good. really shouldn't do is use one of the techniques, even one spot, uh, proposed by Microsoft, to get around the restrictions, right? That would be well, foolish. Yeah. If I mean, so they made a point again of saying, okay, there is a loophole, right? If you're, if you're a CPU, if your CPU TPM isn't, up to the bar we set, you can get it. You can download an ISO. You can 
um, put it on your machine, but we're not guaranteeing that you will get every security update. They're not saying you won't, but they're not saying you will. So buyer beware, Boy. basically. Boy. Yeah. Huh. That's yeah. interesting. Right. Yeah. Um, but they don't well, my say guess is that's a won't. threat. Yeah. <laughs> right. My, my guess is if there was some security breach right. that was really terrible, they'll patch it <clears> on everybody. But don't count on right? it. You just can't, you can't say I, like, okay, if, if something goes wrong and you did this, it's on you. It's not on Microsoft. It's not on the OEM. Right? Uh, yeah. And I think at this I point, after hearing what we've all just said, you'd be nuts. <laughs> to do it. Yeah. You'd have to really yeah, want that, one as well. Well, that person's experience seems extreme to me. I, I, I've, I've not had any problems upgrading any machines to Windows 11, so I, I don't know. Hmm. So you've already put know. the final version on a few machines? Because I haven't put it on oh, anything. Oh, yeah. Well, so you, yeah. one thing to understand is, uh, and let me just look at the, the build number. Oh, yeah. What is the build number again, right? That's it's right. the one that we got in... Um, uh, the beta channel like three weeks ago. It's like uh, right. 22,000.194. Or like this thing has yeah. been around for a while. Like when mm -hmm. I, when I had the tip last week where I said, you know, you can go to the insider download program, you know, thing, download the beta channel ISO, install mm -hmm. that. That's RTM. Like there's no, like, yeah. you don't have to join right. the insider program. You don't have to do anything. Well, you have to be in the insider program just to get it. But I mean, you know, when you install mm -hmm. it, you don't have to be in the insider. Like that thing is unstable right, right now. It's fine. That's RTM. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the one I got, so, in other words, because I was on release yeah. preview track. So that, yeah. that's, I yeah, got release the final. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. yeah. But you know what's so, weird? They haven't said how people who are in the beta and release preview channels will automatically be moved to it, right? Like they haven't said well, like- if you, yeah. So if you do that switch in settings where you say, yeah. just get me on stable when that comes out, that probably yeah. has already happened, right? Assuming you check for updates and so forth. Mm -hmm. Um if you don't make that setting change, yeah. you'll move along with that channel wherever it goes right. in the future. For right now, you're right. fine. I mean, as of today, like the, I don't want to call it a magic window, but I mean, yeah. uh, release preview and beta are on the stable track. They're on right. the same build. Um, mm -hmm. So you should be fine if you want to be. If you want to just yeah. get on the public stable, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's weird because when I asked them that question, I said, so how are you going to, because they said we're moving all the insiders automatically who are in beta and release preview onto the final Windows 11. And I said, how? And they said, we have nothing more to say. Like, okay. Yeah, well, there's nothing, there's nothing to, you're on it already. Like, if you're in those channels, you are on the RTM version. That, yeah. You've got it. So, until the next, that, like you said, until the next release of a well, beta channel. Comes yeah, and that's out, right? not, you know, you know how they are about communicating. Yeah. I don't know if this has ever right. come up. But the, yeah. as of today, well, it's interesting. So yesterday, two days ago, technically, when it was, you know, midnight in New Zealand or whatever, mm -hmm. they actually released right. a new <laughs> dev channel build. Yeah. It's, you is. know, so they, these guys are going to be testing future features. They're not today. Um, mm -hmm. So the build has incremented there. No new features. Again, I don't know why they keep doing this. Um, but the the release channel and uh, beta channel have not revved the build number in, hmm. since they got that built. So right. I would hope they do a little bit better job this time of saying, hey, by the way, if you do want to yeah. stay on public stable, whatever you want to call that, mm -hmm. here's the little switch you need to do. Or mm -hmm. what they could really do, and this would be even better, is say, we're just going to do that automatically for you. If you right. want to continue forward with whatever the beta or release channel becomes, you have to re-sign into that. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. You know, we'll see. We don't know. They have never, you know, they've never said. No. So what's in, okay, so we figured out somehow to get it or not get it, depending on yeah. how risk averse you are. Um, right. What am I not getting what what did Microsoft say we were going to get, and, and what am I not getting? I know Android. The Android uh, store is missing. Right. Anything else significant? I wouldn't call it significant, but it, it was interesting to me how many things they promised that aren't there. So, for example, you know the widgets interface. They repeatedly show. In fact, they showed this came up. I think it was in that Wall Street Journal video recently as well. They showed off the widgets interface going full screen. That doesn't happen. It, this, that interface doesn't exist. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, mm. Rearranging and resizing widgets, not there. Um, there's a, there's a, <laughs> this is crazy, but there's a, a tipping system built into widgets where if you like a, one of the news sources, 
you can, because when you click on those news sources, they actually go to the, a version of the article on MSN and there's mm -hmm. supposed to be a, a way to tip them. Literally, it's called make a con offer a tip is what the button says. It's not there. <laughs> you know, yeah. they talked about how streaming services were going to be integrated into the store so that if you were looking at content, it would give you other options to instead of just buying it from the store. It's not in there. <laughs> Adobe uh, Creative Cloud, Document Cloud supposed to be in the store. Not in there. Mute, unmute from the taskbar. That's the one I think I brought up last week. As we yeah. record this show, there is a, an, a a microphone icon in the taskbar, which one day will mute and uh, unmute the task the uh, uh, microphone globally. It's a great idea. It doesn't work. <laughs> it's not there. Um, That's the one feature, I want of all the features. Yeah. That yep. that is like if you it's said to me, "What's idea. missing that you such need?" That's the one. <laughs> yeah, I also yeah. like the. They should do one for the um, webcam as well, right? Yeah, uh, that'd be globally good block the webcam. Mm -hmm. Smart. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other big one, or the other one, I should say, is something called taskbar share. And this one's a little weird, but basically the idea here is that as you mouse over a an app in your taskbar, if there's some way to share to or from that thing, in addition to its thumbnail, you will see a way to share directly from the pane. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not there, <laughs> you know. And again, none of, none of this is what I would call earth shattering, right. but it's Same. fascinating to me how much they promised that didn't get in the product. And I think a lot of people yeah. who watched that video forgot all about most of that stuff. You know, we're all I focused did. on the Android yeah. app thing. Like it's very exciting. I get it, but right. um, yeah. it's actually several things, you know, I thought that was mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, the one biggest change, like if you said, what's the one thing that somebody who's a normal user who's on 10 is going to notice right. about 11, I would say the new start menu. And I haven't seen anybody complaining about that at all. They should. Because the so new start menu is horribly incomplete at this time. It is I a like huge it though. usability. I do too. It's I like simple the idea. and clean. And I do too. Okay. Same. I, I, I do. Okay. But here's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I agree with you guys. And my tip will be about one of the small things you can do to make it a little bit better. But the big complaint I, got, I have about this is how, like I said, how incomplete it is. So yeah. Um, yeah. The, that pin section in the top by default has, well, it actually depends on your screen resolution and aspect ratio. Mm -hmm. But on this display, which is probably... It's almost certainly 16 by nine. There are three rows of pinned icons and there are six icons mm -hmm. in each row. And it, yeah. it goes down to a second page, so to speak, because you can scroll through it. And that on this computer, there are two more rows of icons. If you actually go through this and say, well, I'm going to, I'm going to customize this thing. You know, yeah. I don't want some of these icons. So you start deleting it because you can right click and say uninstall or just mm -hmm. unpin from start. As yeah. you do that, and you could actually cut it down. So now there's only two rows of icons. It doesn't, the, the thing doesn't automatically lay out the start menu in a, in, a, in a better fashion. It just leaves a blank space right in the middle of the start menu. So if you, if you said, I'm not going to have any pinned icons, yeah. you would have the same amount of space for three rows of icons just sitting there blank. And on this computer, <laughs> the recommended section only has one row of two icons. Mm. So I can see two documents. And if I had got rid of every single pinned application, I could still only see two documents in the start menu. And that is super unsophisticated. So yeah, it's pretty, it it's a good idea. Yeah. You look at yeah. it, you're like, yeah, I like, okay. I like what I think I like what you're doing here. Um, mm -hmm. but it's not, it, it, they haven't finished the job, you know? Yeah. So hopefully right. that's one of those things we'll see in some future update. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I don't, the, the start menu became a secondary interface for me and right. probably for a lot of like it is people. a many, lot of people. many years right. ago. I think so. Yeah. So I, I think it's a little goofy how many entry points there are into search in this release. Yeah, like true. it's, they've kind of overdone yeah. that a little bit. Um, but that's not, a, you know, whatever, that's not a big deal. But, right. um, but yeah, to me, the central issue with this thing is just, I, I wish there was, I wish it was a little more sophisticated. Um, mm -hmm. I wish there was a way because I would use it to access recent documents. I can only see two of them, <laughs> you know, like it's kind of useless. Yeah, like that's, I, that's not great. Yeah, it's not great. I just, so I'm one of those people who doesn't customize almost ever. Right. So, my yeah. start menu just has the last X number of things that I've touched. And for me, that's kind of good because often I'm looking for those last 10 things, right? Like the document yeah. okay. or the app I just installed or whatever. Like for me, being an unsophisticated, non-customizing type person, it works kind sure. of right for me. It's yeah, like the it launcher was, on my phone, right? That's how it works. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, this, this is just... This is what happens when you release a 1.0 product in three months. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. 
anyone who looks at this, with, I mean, and, and really uses it, like you just said, yeah. you some number of documents. I mean, what if this thing could just be those documents, right? No, that would be cool. That would be, if that, that'd if be awesome. One but day, there is no option. That would be great. Yeah. No, I think it, I think it's going to happen. I think it will happen. I do too. I think that is one of those things they'll change. The default app I settings, I'm not so sure. <laughs> I think that's a Machiavellian they were, plot. That so they uh, here's keep. what I'll say about this. We, <laughs> we ascribe a certain maliciousness to that decision and that change, right? Yeah. Which I think is yeah. fair. You know, fair. It's a crazy yeah, thing to touch. And why, why would you yeah. make this more complicated? It hurts the people that want to change things. It, it's bizarre. Yeah. Um, but when you talk to them about it, they're like, oh, yeah, no, we saw that. We, we didn't mean it to be, you know, we weren't. They said people told us they wanted to more granular control. <laughs> it's like, guys, more granular yeah. control is a do everything switch with a drop down where you can go in and change individual things. Not what you did. You you made it horrible. And I, I they seemed genuinely surprised by this feedback. But also, it, it's I don't they didn't promise they were going to fix it, but they it's yeah. one of the things they've heard and, you know, they know about it for sure. Yeah. I don't know. I think it was malicious. <laughs> but, <laughs> I do too. I, that that yeah. one I don't think was by uh, no, chance. No, that that it was, Yeah, it's just, it's just a little too, you know, it's one thing Aggressive. to hit someone yeah. uh, by mistake, <laughs> but you don't go back and whack them a couple more times and then yeah. say, I, I yeah. didn't mean it. <laughs> you know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, but all up, everybody like like they, I didn't see any general outcry on Twitter. Like you no, know, you I didn't see, see anything. Being, right, you always see people going like, "Oh my god, this is the worst! I hate the new look and feel. Like no. it's so terrible. This yeah. is awful." No, yeah. nothing. <laughs> Very little of anything. Right, I know. It was, I, you it, know, the way they launched this whole thing. I'm like, was it a mistake to kind of go really light? on the launch the way they did because they wanted to feel like a right. brand new windows. And then there was no event. Right. And they were, yeah. and it was just kind of like, yeah, here it is. So. <laughs> I, look, I, there's this stuff that's really well done here. And like the, the quick settings interface, which, you know, granted is a complete rip off of Chrome yeah. OS, whatever. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good UI. Like it's, it's the right mm -hmm. UI. Like it, it makes yeah. sense to me. Um, the, the, the notifications thing combined with calendar, it's like, uh, I, I don't love that. I, yeah. Maybe those need I wish to be I could separate. Turn that off. They yeah. Do for me. Yeah. But and plus, you know, what's the point of the calendar if you can't interact with it in any way? Like it's not yeah. even, it's just a calendar, like it's a view of a calendar. Yeah. I mean, that's, I know. that's fine. I mean, maybe that's what pops up when you click on time and date, that would be fine, but maybe notifications yeah. need to be off to the side. Like it was in windows 10, just yeah. make it its own thing, you know? You know what's going to be interesting? So we know they're redoing Mail and Calendar, Project Monarch, right? So how is that yeah. going to impact Windows 11 when that actually is done? Right. Like that may change around how the calendar interacts with the operating system. Yeah, and that's, by the right. way, one of the other issues I have with this release, which is that this was a golden opportunity to finally fix all, or at least update. Yeah. Maybe you think they're fine, you know, like whatever. But like yeah. at least mail, update all of the app, core yeah. apps. Yeah. Uh, to have that Windows 10, 11 look yeah. and feel. And yeah. it's it's just, most of it's just the Windows 10 apps, you know? Yeah. yeah. There's goofy things like OneNote's not in here. Uh, Skype is not in here. Um, it's yeah. it's a little it's a little strange. And there's like things like Groove mm -hmm. and Movies and TV, <laughs> neither of which has been touched yeah. in forever. Um, but Mail and Calendar by far the worst. Yeah, they, they yeah. those need, they need major Fixing. updates. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, you know, I'm whatever. super I'm interested how they do that, right? Like, so right. we know there's only going to be one update to Windows 11 next year. It's going to be in the second half of the year. It'll be called, probably called 22H2, Windows 11 right. 22H2. But how are they going to do all the app updates in between that now I think they do, I think they just do that. I don't think I don't see waiting for that release of Windows. I don't Why either. would you do that? Just ship them I as agree. they come, you know? Right. And I think that, and they can. Done that. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Right. Why yeah. not? And that yeah. way it keeps feeling fresh, you know, which I think I'm right. sure I'm you can turn, you, know, you can turn this turd into a diamond, you know, it, it, like just like, you know, it's like it's shipped horribly and complete. It's like, yeah, but look at all the awesome stuff you're going to get every month going for it. You yeah. know, there's so much to yeah. fix and now we're going to fix it. Like, okay. Right. It is. I it's mean, like be getting so a little fun. gift. Yeah. yeah. Right. Little gifts every month. Very exciting. <laughs> every month. There'll be a new... Drops. Every month, yeah, they could right, call them Panos. like pixel feature drops. Yeah, they could call you them know. Panos something. Panos, Panos gifts. Is. Panos. <laughs> Panos. Is. Yeah. 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 Just call it the 
the pumped up release. Well, that is how we're going to get him. You know, Panos will yeah, uh, he'll tweet. Right, he'll do a Twitter, little tweet. Yep. Right? Here's a little sneak show up preview, in a build, and then eventually right. it will show up in the product. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. Yep. Mm -hmm. Why have all the fun at once? <laughs> <laughs> Panos pieces. Panos pieces. Panos bits. <laughs> Panos flops. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, all right, let's let's uh, let's move on then. I guess we've said everything we have to say about uh, Windows. I think we have. Uh, did you lot. mention that Firefox is coming to the store? That's nice. Oh, yeah. no, I thought that was kind of interesting because yeah. yeah. Mozilla was one of those companies like Epic Games that was very um, critical of the Windows Store, as we used to call it, and as <laughs> Mozilla still calls it, which is hilarious. Um, but, the, the yeah, the Microsoft Store is opening up, obviously, in addition to new content types. They're also, support, uh, also supporting new types of commerce where... Microsoft doesn't get a, a cut of the pay and all that stuff. And I think that's great. And so company or organizations like Mozilla or Epic Games are like, yeah, here we go. This is this is a better store than the thing you launched with Windows 8 back in the day. So that's cool. So that's not there today. But, um, you know, Firefox or Mozilla had some big Firefox releases this week. But uh, they announced as part of that that, yeah, in the coming months, we're coming to the store. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about Cyphus's Cyphus time. Whew. <laughs> oh man, that's exhausting. <laughs> oh god. Well, I, honestly, I mean, you could almost go through this pretty quickly because I only got Surface Pro Eight. I didn't get uh, the Laptop Studio or Surface Go Three. Um, I, I, as a power user, for myself, selfishly, I, I'm more interested in Surface Laptop Studio. But as a fan of Surface and the brand and as someone who, you know, watches Microsoft, I mean, Surface Pro is Surface, right? It's it's more popular than everything else combined. It is by far the most popular and influential PC Microsoft has ever released. And it has only had two designs, right? There's the initial design that was on one and two, 16 by nine, kind of a thick tablet. And then there was um, <clears throat> the design that debuted with Surface Pro 3, which I, I mean, off the top of my head was what, two, th I don't even remember what year that was, two, th I don't know, it doesn't matter, long time ago. Um, and that design, design is where they debuted the three by two display. And uh, and I think that's where it kind of came into its own. It's sort of like, you know, the MacBook Air, everyone thinks about how they pulled it out of the envelope and everything. But what people forget is the first MacBook Air was terrible. <laughs> like mm. nobody ever talks about that. Mm -hmm. The iconic design was the second one. And for Microsoft, the iconic design was, well, the third one, but it was the second design, same thing, a second, you know, the second rev. And so they're continuing with the basics, but now, you know, the screen's bigger, 13 inches, like we saw on Surface Pro X two years ago. Um, new pin connector for the keyboard on the bottom, which is has not happened since Surface Pro 3. Um, same Surface Connect port on the side for power and expansion, uh, but also two Thunderbolt uh, 4 ports, which is huge, right? Um, it's, it's a beautiful machine. I, one thing I didn't get to in my little first impressions article, because I've been, of course, using it, we've only had it for a few days. Right. So since then watching content on this thing, oh God, it's awesome. Uh, Dolby vision. And there's something about the speakers. I was watching a movie last night and there were specific scenes where someone was walking in off camera from the left through the snow. And I could hear the crunching approaching me from the distance. <laughs> like oh, it was, wow. a, it was an impressive um, effect, you know, I don't know what to call that. If it's Dolby Atmos or I don't know what that is, but it was, it was awesome. Like it was, it's a really neat kind of media effect. Um, so they've updated the surface pro signature keyboard, by the way, they got rid of the type cover name. So that's, they're not called type covers anymore. Now it's a keyboard. Same thing though. It's integrated uh, touchpad. It has that little, uh, well for the, the pen where it charges and, um, you know, it does the same dual, you know, you can have it flatter at an angle and all that kind of stuff. Same good typing uh, experience, full-size keyboard backlit, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, Carpenter's pencil, I got to say, I, I'm, <laughs> I, I think the thing I would, I, I have not, I'm, I was sort of an artist in my earlier life. And um, the one thing I think of with a Carpenter's pencil is that those aren't used for art <laughs> usually. Um, they're used by carpenters and they used to mark something up quickly and then it gets covered over by whatever they're building. Um, why would you use that form factor for a pen that's going to be used for art and note taking? It's not very comfortable to hold, and I think the reason is it's flat and they can right. sit on the keyboard. Yeah, and exactly. Close it. Yeah. So okay, you know, and they're calling um, it a carpenter's pencil. So you think, oh, isn't that twee? 
but it's really just yeah. So I yeah. I don't know. Anyway, it uh, it had so try to do the math on this one. This is kind of interesting. There's unique hardware inside of Surface Pro 8 and Surface Laptop Studio that interacts with the pen and makes it better if you use them in conjunction. There's unique hardware in the Surface Slim Pen 2 only that provides haptic feedback and interacts with that custom chip and those two computers. There's custom software in Windows 11 only that makes this whole interaction work as best as it can and you need specific applications to be custom tailored for this whole combination for them to work at all, right? Now, the list of those applications is pretty short. Off the top of my head, I'm not going to remember all of them, but it is, you know, Whiteboard is in there. Um, Microsoft Word is in there. Some third-party apps are in there. OneNote, by the way, not in there, which is mm. kind of interesting. Um, but we know OneNote is making its own transition to the new desktop version that's probably not going to happen until next year. So maybe that's part of that. I don't know. I had a hell of a time getting haptics to work on this thing. And in my case, I had to turn the haptics up all the way. And the idea behind the haptics is as you're drawing on the screen, it's giving you a little bit of a wobble. And if you think about paper, we think of paper as flat, but if you look at paper really closely, you know, paper has little bumps and ridges and stuff. And as you move a pen or pencil over it, it's actually kind of adhering to the contour of that physical thing. And they're trying to emulate that through haptics and it's, you know, it's, it's subtle. I think I'm not sure it's hundred percent successful. It's, um, I don't know. It's okay. Mm -hmm. But the, but the, the whole of those things together, the surface pro eight, the surface pro signature keyboard, the surface slim pen two is exactly what people who love surface pro have been calling for for years. And it's going to make people very, very happy. Um, I don't know if we brought this up on this show, but one complaint I've seen is that the price has gone up and that's technically true, but there, there are two big changes between previous Surface Pros and Surface Pro 8 with regards to how they're pricing things. Um, one is that they don't have a Core i3 version anymore. And that version was kind of junky, honestly, um, really low powered. And the, the other difference is, and they don't have that anymore. So it's Core i5 and Core i7 only. The other big difference is that the Core i3 and Core i5 versions of the product on Surface Pro 7 and 6, and I don't remember how far back, um, did not have a fan. So they were passively cooled, but that meant the thro uh, processor was throttled as well. And as the thing heated up, it would get throttled more and more. So now it's all active cooling. It's very quiet. I've never actually heard the fan come on in any meaningful way. And the Core i5 product starts at uh, $1,100. The Core i5 version of uh, Surface Pro 7 started at $1,200 a year ago or yeah, I think it was a year, whenever it came out a year ago, probably a year ago. Um, so I, it's actually, on, in that sense, kind of a price reduction. But the keyboard and the pen are actually more expensive. So I guess it kind of balances out. But um, it's a premium PC, folks. You know, so an $1,100 plus computer with a 100 and I think it's $30 pen and a, I don't remember the exact price, $160 or $170 even, you know, uh, whatever the total cost is, it's, it's expensive, but it's it's. I think it's in line with other premium computers, and it's 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 beautiful. I mean, it, it works really, really well. So, last week or the week before, we we pointed out that both you and Mary Jo and me, all three of us, mm -hmm. reluctant, rarely recommended a Surface to anybody. Yeah. Would you? Would, <laughs> does this change your uh, tune on that? Well, as I told Mary Jo privately the other day, um, I was preparing my screenshots for my Windows 11 review uh, using that device because it's a very clean install, or it was at the time, very clean install of Windows. And it froze up on me while I was doing it. Oh, my and God. I wouldn't, nothing would work. I control absolutely nothing, nothing, nothing. So I had to hold down the power button, shut the thing down. You know, you wait 10, 20, 30 seconds, power it up, nothing happens. And I'm like, oh, man, here we go. So this is the surface reliability that I'm uh, familiar with and worried about. <laughs> and um, it, to, to, just to beat to the, or to cut to the chase, I, it did eventually come up, of course, and it you know within say 15 or 20 minutes, it, I did experience uh, a problem again with it not working right. It didn't freeze completely, but it and then it was okay. It has been okay since. So this was probably what Monday, I think, when this happened. Um, I've only had it since last Thursday, so. That's the only time that's happened. I, I, I feel obligated just to mention that it happened. At, but when I prepare the final review, say in two or three weeks, I'll have a lot more experience under my belt and we'll see. Um, but 
yeah, I, I, this is the fear, right? I mean, yeah. And unfortunately, I, I you kind of go into it with your experiences as, as in the back of your head, and I'm, I'm nervous about surface. And so, when something like that happens, I'm like, uh, <laughs> you know, like here we go. But honestly, overall, it's been fine. I, but again, I, it would be disingenuous of me not to at least mention that this did happen. So, so far, has it changed? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I think the people who love Surface and love this device particularly are, are going to run out and grab it. And they, I think they'll be happy. Yeah, we have, um, you know, people like Alex Gumpel just love their Surfaces and yeah. will undoubtedly and buy I, an 8, you know. And this, honestly, uh, for someone like me who's more of a traditional laptop user, like I'm re realistically, I'm not really going to use the pen. I'm not going to take notes or anything like that. I do like the typing experience in the trackpad quite a bit. I love that it's finally, it's finally like laptop sized. It's a 13-inch screen. So to me, it's less of a compromise than it was before. It still has all the lap ability, sameness of before, of course, all that stuff. But um, let me, give me a couple weeks <laughs> before I can say <laughs> yeah. my impression of Surface you, overall has changed. So you do like the keyboard on Surface Pro I do, yeah. devices? Yeah. You do? You don't I find it really have, bouncy? Yeah. No. So, so obviously it's a little more bouncy than a, like a hardware, it's, I mean, it's a hardware keyboard, you know what I mean? Like a keyboard yeah. base it, it, by nature. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's angled off the ground and yeah. angle with, right. you know? Um, so yeah, I mean, it, I, and I'm look, I, monster hands, heavy hands. I, yeah. I, I, I beat on the thing, but I don't find it overly bouncy. It's not like, you know, if you've ever been in a car trying to use the computer, it's bouncing like, it's, <laughs> it's like, a, you know, you're, you're, you're actually causing yeah. the mouse curse to go flying on site. It's not like that. I mean, it's, yeah. it is definitely bouncier. But I, yeah. I still like it quite a bit. I, I, it's amusing to me, and I mentioned this in my uh, signature keyboard article. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you go back to the original Surface, Microsoft thought that this, the thing we all forget about, the touch keyboard, I they know. thought this was going to yeah. be the big thing. And this was they just did. a cover that when yeah. you put it down, it, there was just a flat keyboard layout on the thing. But it was, the experience <laughs> was just like typing on glass. And it looking was. at it today, you're like, well, why would you ever want something like this? Because everyone was typing literally on glass using an iPad right. before this, mm -hmm. and it covered up two thirds of the screen. So the idea is we'll take that experience and take it off of the screen. Mm -hmm. You can see the whole screen, and you could use it as a protective cover when you're walking around with it. And it made a lot of sense, except that it mm -hmm. didn't in real life because everyone was like, this is terrible. Why would I want to do this? Yeah. You have a great type cover that works wonderfully. Yeah. You know, com comparatively, I guess. Right. So yeah, I'm okay with it. Like I, I, I could use it. I mean, I, yeah. it's not, it's not optimal. It's not my type of either, work. right? It's not lappable. Yeah, I'm, I'm tall, but I, I think I also have short upper. The upper part of my leg is kind of short compared to the rest of my body. If that makes sense. <laughs> so well, but it just means you know I can't rest. <laughs> when I use a laptop, it has to kind of hang off the edge of my knees, and the weight of my hands on the keyboard stops it from toppling over i can't do that with surface pro because of, it's a magnet connection right. you know like that would you know it's it's still a tablet so it's the the heaviness is on the top i'll just say but, again there's a reason <laughs> laptops are called laptops right right, right. that's true that's they true work. i they just work <laughs> yeah but you know what i i use it up on the bed and you know instead of using the kickstand you can just lean it against the wall works yeah. great um, if yeah. you were on a plane and you just wanted to watch movies and stuff, you could rip the keyboard right off and that thing would fit wonderfully no matter what kind of seat you had, you know? I mean, there were, there were oh reasons. Oh, my God, there's a giant cat. <laughs> <laughs> He's so funny. He really knows where you are and what you're doing. That's so funny. He does. Yeah. He's like a staying Harry right Housen special down. effect. Yeah, really. It it's was like Release the Kraken. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. Good. I, uh, did you talk about the uh, ocean mouse yeah, no, no, but so <laughs> the ocean mouse is a, is a cheap in every sense of the word mouse. Um, it's, it's funny that I've written, I've written it wrong. I've said it wrong a bunch of times. I, I think of it as being 20% ocean recovered plastics. It's yeah. not, it, that's just the, it's just the, the, the outside part of it, the, the shell. I mean, if you look at the whole mouse, it's probably like 5%. It's a tiny out. little bit. Um, it looks like a bar of soap. It literally has little flavor crystal things in it. It's kind of a, 
It's weird, like a Ooh. yeah, like an Irish bar. So, and it has um, the Irish spring. It does do you know quick pair and <laughs> and uh, whatever. It, it's ambidextrous in the sense that it's not oriented yeah, yeah. to a right-handed person. Microsoft's always made people. nice mice. Uh, looks a lot like a regular Microsoft mouse. It's twenty-five it? bucks, you know. So it's it it yeah. is uh, every dollar of its value. Um, it comes in a one hundred percent recycled box, so you can toss that thing right in recycling and feel good about it. Uh, you can see the mm -hmm. flavor crystals there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you know like the gum that has flavor crystals in it. I have the, the classic um, Microsoft mouse. And, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I buy these. By oh, my the, God. You aren't kidding. No. <laughs> it's the, the Intellimouse. <laughs> yeah. It's the yeah, best this mouse is old. You ever. can tell it's old because it's, well, it's wired, but it also has the red light, right? Because they switched to blue yeah. lights, like, no. you know, seriously, mm -hmm. like 17 years ago. Is that ago. better? But, <laughs> yeah, it's more accurate. But see, um, see how this it works on more materials. It has one, two, yep. yeah. three, four five buttons it's got a scroll right. wheel a yeah. six seven buttons gonna even count the main one yeah so I this mean, one this only has three really, buttons this is a great this is like yeah is it a ps2 connector Leo, or no no it's usb <laughs> i bought like a dozen of them because it's the best mouse right. ever made yeah yeah um it's yeah this is the uh the jeep of mice right yeah it's built to last and it, it's i've had yeah. this forever and it's great yeah. Yeah, I never have liked Microsoft Mice. I just haven't found any. Oh, of them. I, re I actually really Great. like Microsoft Mice. Most I of them, do too. Um, I think this is a the lot best. of them. I should say. Why don't you like guys? Them? Logitech. Oh yeah, you like the MX. <laughs> you know what? I have to agree with you. The MX anywhere. I, listen, I have a, a pretty good My job is only there, possible yeah. because I have a Microsoft ergonomic keyboard. I don't know what I would do without yeah. this thing. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to like that too. Never could get it to it. No, it made me queasy. <laughs> They should call that the ocean keyboard. It's like typing on a wave. <laughs> right. So 25 oh, yeah. bucks. As, as, as Brad and I joke, uh, when you're done with the mouse, I think you can just throw it in the ocean. It's fine. Like, I think it that's the point. It looks like, like it's just great. It's <laughs> Go right back in there. <laughs> just recycles like immediately into the it's ocean. It's like a little bar of soap. Really yeah, does look totally. like an Irish spring. I don't like yeah. the look of it. No, it looks say. really cheap. And you know what? It's just... Yeah. It's really a corporate thing so they can say, look, we're recycling ocean plastics. Because I can't imagine this is making a dent in ocean plastics. Right. Right. Well, I, no, they probably Man. saved a seagull or two, but it, it's, <laughs> it's, not, yeah, it's not a big It's a thing. start, guys. It's a start. It's a start. It says it shell start. made. Okay. Oh, okay, wait a minute. The right. shell is made with 20% ocean plastic. Yeah, the rest of it's just destroying no, the The shell isn't even entirely made with ocean plastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Only yeah, exactly. one-fifth of this right. ugly-ass shell is made with right. ocean plastic. So this is completely a corporate thing do you about think that, um, make you feel dots good. Are actually, do you think that's like beach sand? That, that might be the is? ocean plastic is the little dots. <laughs> that's right. it. Yes, that's the 20%. It's little grains so of sand. Not 20% mm -hmm. of the mouse. 20% right. of the shell. I know. Right. Get a Logitech. Okay. Just you know what? This. It works. I mean, it's, <laughs> it will, you could throw it in your bag and not feel, it doesn't weigh anything. I think it, it's like, uh, why not 100%? You know? Is there something wrong with ocean plastic that we don't know about? <laughs> I think Toxic they're going to get there. I, 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 it's structurally <laughs> flawed. Well, remember, Leo, we watched that event together. Yeah. And we, we were like, what? You just introduced one mouse. That's with it. A, a minuscule <laughs> proportion of recycled materials. Yeah. And then you went off in this giant sustainability mm. story like you were saving a planet. I think it's this like, is really the thing now with corporations. It is. It is. It's complete lip service. It is. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. yeah. I, look, I've already said this, but other companies are doing much more with this kind of stuff. So right. I think Microsoft will get there. Yeah. All right, though, but we've been saving the best review yes, for last. The best, yes, yeah. Mary Joe dressed for her review today. Yes. Um, you should I go get reviewed, it. Do you have, still have it? Do you have the little container? I do. Well, there's not we much should... left, but yeah, I have it. <laughs> Wait a minute. What is it? Chips? What is it? Uh, so I chip. got the blueberry ice cream from Microsoft. Oh, you did? I did. So this is the Windows 11 swag mm -hmm. giveaway thing. It's a blueberry infused ice cream made by a really small gourmet ice cream maker here in New York called Mikey Likes It. Here's oh. a description. Blueberry infused ice cream ribboned with the best part of blueberry pie blended with pound cake bites topped with candy colored oh. chocolate pieces. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's so awful. 
It's better than it sounds. Okay. But here's what here's the real kicker. It, it ain't vanilla. Okay, good. I know. Right. I wanted it to be chocolate for dark <laughs> yeah. mode. It would have made way more yeah, sense. Yeah. But it embodies the fluid design of the OS oh. and the iconic Windows 11 bloom through the blueberry compote swirls <laughs> and the blue chocolate candies. I'm not making this up. They said this. Yeah. Did um, you recycle any of it or how does that work? <laughs> it's this? like ocean plastic after you're done with it you use the container right. as not like in a the stand ocean mary joe what are you doing <laughs> it was tasty chocolate would have been better but it was still good so but that means you're a very special person you didn't get the review unit for the duo but you did get the bloomberry so the box this thing came in, I'm not kidding you, it was huge. And it had the Windows 11 logo on it. And inside was like a little cake of dry ice. And the, yeah, it and looks the pretty, pint so, pretty frosty. Um, it was so cool. What do you think the impact on the environment of that packaging was? I uh, know. Would you say know, it obviated right? a some number of mice? <laughs> Maybe. Mary Jo, you're like, did you get this too, Paul? No. No, I didn't get they any knew, ice cream. They knew he would hate it. He doesn't like sweets. He hates ice cream. I don't like I, I don't like ice cream, but even, he's one of these guys. Even, so I think it means you're in with like the influencers, Mary Jo. Look, yes. I Justine. Yes. I Justine. Uh, Mikey likes it says Mikey likes it. That's the what name of the company that makes it. That's the name of the brand. Oh, oh yeah. that's how did they get that name? You know, Mikey I'm disappointed, Mikey though. runs the ice cream place. Neither guys. you nor Justine. Does it? Oh, is he that kid? No, it's amazing. just a, no, in, not it's that a guy. hipster joke. Yeah. Remember, yeah, this but is, that's got to be owned by, what was that, uh, Life Cereal, I think? Mikey, he likes it. Do you hey, think Mikey. Mikey likes it? Like, is it registered trademark of Life Cereal? Yeah. <laughs> All rights <laughs> reserved? How about blue, blueberry compote swirl? How about that? Is right, that exactly. Oh, frick. Yeah. So I have hope now that I might get the duo too. If I Justine got the ice cream and I got the ice cream, maybe I am an You're influencer. In. Wow! I actually I confuse you two sometimes. So I know we do look a lot alike, and I have that giggle <laughs> and stuff. Right? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised. I mean, look, I think that's pretty special. I doubt there. How many people got that? That's very special. Jeez. I did wow. feel special. I had yeah. it for breakfast yesterday. It was a delight. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is, so that was the entire entirety of the uh, promotional campaign for Windows 11, is sending some, <laughs> yeah, some influencers yes. some, some ice cream. By the cream. way, still better than those Windows 7 parties though, right? I know. I, guess, I worried yeah. about that. I worried about that. They said to me, we want to send you a package on, on Windows 11 day. And I'm like, oh no, they're not going to send me a party kit. Are they? Wow! Wow! Yeah. I'm impressed. Uh, you impressed couldn't you couldn't too. keep it till today though, huh? Couldn't couldn't hold what? off. No, there's some there's some in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see. Go get it. I want to. Let me do an ad, and you can go right, get it because I want to see it. the blueberry compote squirrel, swirls. I want to see if it does right. in fact look like Windows 11. You, like the bloom thing. Like the bloom in Windows 11. That's what I want to see. Our show today, while Mary Jo is fetching. <laughs> Her ice cream. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by Melissa. You know, did you know that 30% uh, of your customer data goes bad every year? Having accurate customer address data, though, is really, I think you will agree, important in, in all seriousness for the success of your business. You don't want to mail brochures, bills, catalogs to the wrong address, mail extras, duplicates to the same address. Melissa can solve that. 36 million address changes processed by the Postal Service last year. That's 36 million addresses that changed. You know, that's a lot. Melissa's been doing this, helping businesses maintain fresh data for over 35 years. In fact, that's what, you know, they've got 10,000 happy customers who had trust the address experts. And I mean happy. Melissa's renewal rate over 92%. People love Melissa. It really works for them. And it's not just addresses. You can verify emails. You can verify phone numbers, names in real time with Melissa. In fact, Melissa's global address verification service verifies addresses for 240 plus countries and territories. And they can do it at the point of entry as you're actually, you know, typing it in or, or even better, your customers type it in because, you know, we all make mistakes. That mistake can cost you, but Melissa can fix it. 
get the information that completes your customer profiles too. Things like uh, marital status, social media handles, anything in public records, they can add to it. Melissa's flexible deployment options offer different platforms to suit your needs, your preferences, your size of business, your budget. Uh, you can do it on-prem, of course, uh, but there's also a web service. There's even there's a secure FTP site you can upload your files, your address list to, and download it. I've, that's what I do with the Christmas card list every year. There's software as a service, um, and they, you know there's a complete API. In fact, they have new lookup apps to demonstrate the API on uh, Google and iOS, on Android and iOS. So you take look for the lookups plural lookups app. It, you can use it to search addresses, names, and more. You can see how well Melissa works. Melissa continually undergoes independent security audits because they know that data is important to you. It's important to Melissa. They're committed to data security, privacy, and, of course, complete compliance. SOC 2, HIPAA compliant, GDPR compliant. That's really important. And the best support. Man, if you sign up for a service level agreement, you will get 24-7 world-famous support from Melissa's Global Support Center. They are continuing, by the way, to support uh, qualifying essential workers and communities during COVID-19. Your organization might qualify for six months of free service. Just apply online at melissa.com. Congratulations once again. Melissa is in the G2 crowd report for fall this time, 2021, as a leader in address verification and data quality software. That tells you they're meeting the diverse needs of their customers. So congratulations, Melissa. Well done. The G2 Crowd Fall 2021 report. Make sure your customer data is up to date. Try Melissa's APIs in the developer portal. It's easy to log in, sign up, start playing in the API sandbox any time of the day or night. Just do it. Uh, in fact, you can even get started with 1,000 records cleaned for free. So you can really try before you buy. Go to melissa.com slash twit. M-E-L-I-S-S-A. Melissa.com slash twit. It. We thank Melissa so much for their support of Windows Weekly. Let's see those blueberry compote swirls. Ooh, that doesn't look like Windows 11 at all. Looks like purple ice cream. It's Does, purple. Why are you eating out of blue. the cat's dish? <laughs> 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 That's the human dish that the cat gives her. <laughs> I mean, the cat's going to yeah. be confused by the dish. He, he he has his own set of these dishes. Oh, boy. Okay. He's got a little far, Mary Jo. Do yes. we need to do an intervention? No. She's got a, the cat. The dish It's cute, actually. <laughs> we I, I completely understand. It's all over the house. Lisa is also cat crazy. Yeah. And we have cat everything, everywhere. See? Yeah. Exactly. Leah, we've seen her Instagram feed. We know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know. Let me put it this way. When she unlocks her phone, is there a picture of me? No. Her kid? No. It's a picture of her cat. Yep. So yep. Let's, let's be let's be honest. So uh but we do like the dish, actually. I think I might like it better than the uh the ice cream. I know. It's not the most attractive looking ice cream, it's but it's purple. pretty tasty. Good. Yeah, it's very purple. But it's good. Yeah. Not everybody tweeted the uh container. No one can tweet a picture of the stuff. So we I know, I know. We couldn't really yeah. see if it looked like Windows 11 wallpaper. The bloom of Windows <laughs> the 11. Bloom. Oh, my God. I think it's so weird they call that that wallpaper design the bloom because that's also what they call the HoloLens thing. You know, they're like, you do the bloom oh. gesture, right? Microsoft's right. famous for reusing yeah. stuff, aren't they? They don't. They are. Yeah. Yeah. They are. yeah. yeah. That, no name. Every name is overloaded by a... Many times. Sure. Yeah. All right. So we have now reviewed the surface. Yeah. We have now reviewed the ice cream. We have now mm -hmm. even reviewed the ocean plastic mouse. So before we move on, um, I, I, we did not review uh, Surface Laptop Studio or Surface Go 3. But based right. on the reviews I've seen, just a couple of real quick comments. Mm -hmm. um, I, <laughs> the Surface Laptop Studio apparently doesn't get great battery life, which is concerning. Oh, um, not surprising. And unfortunately, the Surface surprising. Go 3, yeah, it looks like even the Core i3 version of Surface Go 3 is not a, does not perform all that great, which is disappointing. Yeah. I was really hoping they were going to get on top of that because I think there's a, I think there's a market for a smaller tablet running Windows, you know, uh, with all of the Surface quality things that we like. Um and I wish they could just kind of figure, I wish they could get past the Pentium thing, but 
um, unfortunately, it seems like it's not as big of a leap as I'm sure somewhere as I was hoping for sure. You know. Yeah. Oh well. Are you going to get those later and review them? Um, I haven't asked, and they haven't asked me. Um, I, I'd be happy to review either, of course. I'd be happy to review Surface Duo too. I mean, honestly, but I mean, I don't always, I don't really get everything every time. So There's a lot of stuff. You can't get everything. Yeah. yeah. No. No one would want everything, to be honest. No. Well, on know, the outside, it seems like you would. <laughs> but honestly, you're right. <laughs> no. Um, it's a disaster uh, yeah. having this much stuff. No. People. You, but yeah. Paul, wait, I want I want to ask you a thing about the battery life. Yeah. You're going to okay. ask me about the pro battery so, life? So I feel like a lot of times we, we just say, oh, it's the Surface that has bad battery life and such. But I think yeah. it's Windows PCs in general. They just don't have the battery life that people claim. Like uh, it's always half of what any vendor claims for me. It's And you know me, I don't run yeah. a lot of complicated things. But I get, I whenever I see a battery life claim on a Windows PC, I just have it. Because yep. that's what my battery life is going to be. So- I feel like that has gotten a lot better in recent years, but the big change that has to happen, and, and, and honestly, to be fair to the PC makers, this kind of has happened. We used to rely on like video, local video playback, Wi-Fi off, screen really dim right, right. to try to get the best yeah. possible battery life number. That's yeah. completely unrealistic, right? So most totally. PC makers right. now are being, you know, they'll, they'll use uh, like web browsing, productivity benchmarks and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's got, but you're right. I, I well, I, I don't remember these numbers off the top of my head. In the past year, yeah. if you go back and look at the products I reviewed, a lot of them are better than half, but yeah, you're right. Very rarely does one meet that number. No. Um, yeah. The only ones that did oddly are the ARM based windows machines, right? Where they'll, and the, the, those numbers are coming down, but in the early days it was like 25 hours or 22 hours, 20 plus hours. Like, yeah, actually those machines could do that. Um, it was yeah, a terrible I never got that. I got, yeah. oh, okay. I got half of half of what they said. Oh, all right. Yeah, it depends on what you're doing, obviously. But I, I, I've only so I've only had the Surface Pro eight since third, so less than a week. And I did, yeah. I did, I just checked what the battery. You know, there's a battery test you can do. Mm. It was six and a half hours, right? Which yeah, is nothing special. Right. I mean, it's no. nothing special. But but I just got it. I mean, I'm not. Gonna, that's not. A number I would yeah. report in a review or anything. I mean, I need to. Right. I need to use it a lot more. Yeah, I bet yeah, it's for sure. I bet it gets up around eight. You know, something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's all I wanted to ask because I just one day yeah. maybe my maybe Microsoft will solve this. I feel like it's a Windows problem uh, more than it is a hardware yeah. problem. Well, you know who? Honestly, let me let me just throw this in. Uh, mm -hmm. who, whose battery life does live up to the stats and whose I battery life is say. astounding is Apple, uh, both I on know. the phone and the tablets and on the laptops now with the M1. Yeah, I true. think it may not be Microsoft. Honestly, I think it might be Intel. It might be the architecture. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. okay. uh, you know, Intel is transitioning right to this big little yeah. architecture. And mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, it's... Look, in the same way that hardware makes security better, hardware can make this better because you'll have more yeah. efficient cores that will run when the system's not doing anything mm -hmm. or for mm -hmm. background tasks or whatever. So, yeah, I, I think we're going to see that improve with the, the new yeah. style chips as we go forward to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's something to it. I mean, you know, ARM devices, ARM was designed for highly mobile devices that need, you know, to be on battery all the time, you know, so they were very low power but mm -hmm. lasted a really long time. You know, computers, right. we're using a computer system that comes up out of the desktop age. It's really know? a desktop system. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Getting it this is. thing to run without a, a wire is <laughs> kind of almost a miracle. What's really interesting is Apple's actually improving on battery. If the new iPhones yeah. are uh, spectacularly really. better. Yeah, and, they're thicker uh, too, though. And right? the re I mean, they had to, no, it's not, they had to get heavier. It's a little bit bigger battery, a little bit, but really, uh, in fact, a non-tech just put out their article uh looking at uh, the new chip, the A15 chip. Right. And mm -hmm. they have really doubled down on the efficiency cores. And yep. uh, the efficiency cores, which are the ones that are low power, so you go into low power mode, you save battery, are getting so fast mm. that they're, you know, for all intents and purposes, practically sure. performance cores, but are running at a very efficient level. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that is... So that would be, that would benefit huge. ultralight computers, that, that kind of architecture. Same thing. And know? well, this is, you know, effectively, the A15 is the chip that will be in the next generation to Mac, a, mo a modification of it. So, yeah, I think 
I think, so, you know, this is, this is a reason to move to a newer platform sometimes. Sometimes you're mm -hmm. saddled with a platform like the Intel architecture that... Right. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm reviewing a, uh, a Chromebook that runs on a Snapdragon 7C platform, right? So there's no, there aren't really good benchmarks on Chrome OS, so I'm not sure how I'm going to measure this thing. But I bet that probably does pretty well, too. Yeah. Right for the, some of the same reasons, and and I, honestly, when it, Apple was running Intel, they were I mean they were getting good battery life, but it was not better than HP or any of the companies. No, and by the really, way, back then they suffered from the same problem. They would they, had the they same would problem. talk about battery life, and it'd be like, yeah, it's about half or two thirds of that. Yeah. Best, you know? I always did that math. I figure you're going to yeah. half that. Um, but right. these days, you know, in the last five years, maybe four years, uh, Apple's been mm. very accurate with their battery estimation. It's hard. Look, this is a hard thing to do because everybody uses their phone differently. The amount of screen right. time and so forth is different. Leo, I think what you're trying to say is it's a hard computer science problem. It is a hard <laughs> computer science problem. And, um, it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, hey, good news. <laughs> Office 2021 the Perpetual License Edition, you now have a oh, price for that. Cue the confetti effect. woo <laughs> Yep. For all you subscription haters out there, <laughs> <laughs> Office yeah. 2021 for consumers is out. So the Home and Student Edition costs 150 bucks. Oh. Home and Business, 250 bucks. This is the one, you don't have to have a subscription. It's supported for five years. You can only run it on one PC or Mac. Oh, okay. It has fewer right. features than the Microsoft 365 versions do. Um, but it's still got a, a refresh on features. And it also got the, you know, the whole neutral color palette update so that it looks really good with <laughs> Windows 11. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that I know strikes people, me I love, how, I love how quickly you would just blah, blah, blah. that thing. Blah, blah, blah. Blueberry There's just nothing much blah, blah, blah. to say about it, right? It's like... Well, but let it, me ask you, um, what do you think yeah. about the five-year thing? Is that what it was last time? Is this... Um, I, think, I feel like this or, might be new. The five-year? I don't like, know. Or some things got remember. moved from 10 to 5. Um, but yeah. five, five years is the minimum it was supported before, I'm pretty sure. Um, okay. Yeah. So if you buy it, you know, the, the math people are doing is, okay, I'm going to keep this for five years and get updates to it for five years for security and such. So divide that number by five right. and that's what I'm paying per year. And, oh, it's less than I might pay for the Microsoft 365 subscription, right? It is, I don't know. It, but remember, but you get that one terabyte of storage. And how much is one terabyte of storage worth a year? I know. And, and you can only run it on one five or, device. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I, so, geez. yeah, I know. There are people who want yeah. this. It's out. It's yeah. out as of yesterday. You can buy it as of yesterday. Um, right. If you're somebody who does not want the subscription and you want the perpetual, you can get it. That's it. That is a curious. I, I get. I, I understand the aversion to subscriptions. I, I really do, and I Me feel too. like one of Same. the biggest problems we have is we're drowning in subscriptions. I, I totally get yeah. that, but. Yeah. The big success of Microsoft 365 to me is that they made it such a no-brainer. Yeah. And even as an individual, right? What is that? 69.99 per year? Yeah, uh, that's a what terabyte. I yeah. Terabyte of storage. I know. I know. That's access a lot. to the web it apps, is. access to the mobile right. apps full featured, right? <laughs> Multiple computer up yeah. to 5 computers. Um yep. man. So what I, don't I you just, get if you buy the perpetual license? You said it's lower featured besides the OneDrive well, it storage. Well, doesn't Wonder, uh, the Office applications are updated constantly uh, through Right, and these the, are the not. Oh. Right? No, in fact, they're, they're not even up to date with... It's not with like what's they in Microsoft this 365. In, uh, no, right. I mean, the, the, really, there's only some features that have been introduced in Microsoft 365 over the past several right. years that are in this product. Mm -hmm. um, they have right. a real-time collaboration feature they added, that new mm -hmm. UI you mentioned. Uh, and a couple, This is really just a handful of things. Not this much. thing is basically yeah. Office 2016. And for many people, that's all they want, right? Like they're like, yeah. I don't use almost any of the features know, and that's good I, I enough get it, for me. But one computer, no I storage. I agree with you. <laughs> I just, I, I mean, I, so, I, I no, understand so the aversion. This is, I don't, go ahead. I don't even have either of these, right? I don't have Microsoft 365 with the apps because I don't use the apps almost right, ever. Right. I use the web versions yeah. of the apps. And for me, those are fine and they're free. It's not true for everyone. Like some people need certain features right. of Word or Excel or PowerPoint, and they have to have at least a perpetual version, if not the subscription. I don't need a subscription of any kind to use the web apps fully. No. Oh, for some reason I thought that I had to yeah. be 
a subscriber. I was no. actually just no. working through that in my mind. I think that's correct. I, I, I think it is full yeah. feature. So that's you the, don't get the back. Well, you don't get the store, right? They only store to the web. So right. you don't have, you only have, what is it? Five or seven gigs of storage okay. if okay. you don't pay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you, you would, you might that's run into a lot that of storage issue. though. Um, I mean, if you're just documents. saving documents, yeah, no, I know, but it's about more than that, right? You have photos you're taking with your phone. You should be backing those up to OneDrive too. Um, and you're going to run out of seven gigs really yeah. fast there. Plus the whole point of saving, well, not, one of the points of saving in the cloud is you can access it from any device. And if you have one computer using web apps and one computer that's got the native apps, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, this is, it's just a, it's kind of a virtuous cycle. I, I don't, mm. I just feel like they've made it such an obvious, I, I know Microsoft feels the same way, but of course yeah. there are people yeah. that just don't want there it. There are people who don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. So now you have that option, which is great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm learning here. Learning. Yeah. yeah. It, it, Cause yeah. I, it does seem like I remember going in many years ago to buy office to like a Staples and for some reason, right. I think it was like seven hundred bucks. Am I completely? Oh missing? sure, no, yeah, it, it absolutely. Was. So this is a you lot can spend a less. Thousand bucks in office. To, yeah, this is a lot less yeah. than they used to charge. Well, the world's changed, right? So we can we can credit probably Google Docs in part for this, right? The prices have come down. Mm -hmm. Um, I, yeah, but you used to be able to put it on two computers, right? So even like they're, they're subtly does Sriracha yeah. get a even license less uh, if I. If I buy it, can he have a license? He does. Yeah. He gets his own license, the cat license. <laughs> <laughs> but no ice cream. I hope he's not eating that no blueberry ice cream. compote. No, he smelled that and he was like, nope. Oh, good. Nope. He's smart. He said it smells <laughs> like windows. <laughs> it smells like Windex. I'm sure it's... Like, anyway. So, okay. so I think given all the users you get, the terabyte of storage, the regular updates, mm -hmm. that's a big deal. Yeah, it doesn't. It's if, who yeah. would buy the perpetual license? Even there are, at this much reduced <laughs> luddites, Leo luddites. <laughs> no, so for me, okay, I don't. I don't have two to six people I want to share it with, right? Well, like, that's I don't true. Want anyone to that's share a good point. It, right? yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, but then there's you don't have to. You don't have to do the family version. You can do the personal version right. if you want to use it that way. Right. Um. But even for me, just, I just, just put for it on the storage, I would just just the storage. Yeah. What does it cost yeah. to buy OneDrive storage? If you could look, if you look that up, that's a good yeah. deal. I think what you'll find mm -hmm. it's great. Is that uh, you, there's no way the math makes you'll any sense. You'll save money, right? Right. Yeah, like where's the like and you it, get the office for free? Buy the there storage. Are people who still want it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, I, yeah, um, and I think this is Microsoft saying, "All right, fine." Yeah. And they, it's very clever how they've kind of you know yeah, messed so around with the features. Mm -hmm. Two two hundred gigabytes of storage is two dollars a month, so twenty four dollars a year. Mm -hmm. you know, twenty four dollars a year plus whatever the cost of that thing was is that's a hundred gigabytes. Hundred two hundred two hundred gigs. I'm looking at the oh that's for business. I'm looking at home. It says yeah, I, the OneDrive standalone hundred gigabytes dollar ninety nine a month. Oh wow. So I'm looking at some, uh, maybe because I already have some. I'm looking at, at the Microsoft like page. Place. Okay, okay. Um, but it doesn't even say how you could buy a terabyte. I don't even, <laughs> even see this. So this says, like, itself, yeah, this yeah. says it's one terabyte is nine ninety nine a month. Ten dollars a month. So it's even more. That's crazy. Yeah. So yep. yeah. it's more than the cost of the subscription. <laughs> yeah. the Microsoft 365 subscription. Yeah. Wow. I know. I don't yeah. understand so the math. No, you know, so the biggest competitor to Office is Office, right? Like people who buy Office, they just are like, yeah, I'll just keep it forever. And I don't even care if I get security updates. Like I'm just going to keep it forever and just keep using it forever, right? Yeah. Okay. Those, that's those I mean, people. I, people have, we have one computer. Um, yeah. I use a fight, I guess. I, I don't need storage. Do you think I, they I, used Excel to figure out the price? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but they use Definitely. the web version. They, it's a pivot table, baby. We got a pivot table here. I think you really nailed it, uh, Paul, when you said the, co the 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 competition is is Google Drive and uh, you know the Google Docs. Yeah, I mean it's just yeah. you can't charge several hundred bucks for yeah. a standalone office anymore. Yeah, no, not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 I've got to point out Open Office or LibreOffice too. I mean, there's there's pretty good free office solutions out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if you don't want to pay for anything, sure. Yeah. Right. Microsoft is going to add a new education-focused plan to their Microsoft 365 as well. Yeah. Tell us this about just that. just bears a quick mention, but it's it's a couple weird things about this. So it's called Microsoft 365 A1 per device subscription plan. <laughs> um, there's already an that just A1. Rolls Microsoft off the tongue. That's, it does. Uh, yeah. So there's there's already a Microsoft 365 A1, which is free to students, right? And it has your basic um, Word, Excel, PowerPoint subscription bundle kind of thing. This is $38 per device, good for six years. Oh. So the device is covered for six years. So there's a lot of questions about, so who is this for? And why are they doing this? My guess is they, they must be about to do some, some kind of a similar plan for Intune so that they, you know, we always talk about in education, the reason that Windows doesn't do well against Chromebooks isn't the operating system so much as it is how easy it is to wipe and, and uh, manage and replace PCs. So if you could have some kind of a coverage like this per device lasting six years and you had something comparable to manage those PCs, maybe this is how they're coming in again trying to get at Chromebooks. That's my guess what they're doing here. They were very kind of not forthcoming about why they added this plan and who it's for. Um, so I, I have a feeling like this is just the first shoe to drop in this space. Just a guess. Interesting. Huh. You know, somebody's saying, uh, Matt in the chat room, Retcon saying in the chat room, uh, it used to be you'd say, oh, yeah, you really want to hook the kids on an office when they're young because yeah. then they'll be using it. I, will they be using it when they go in the workplace five years from now? Right. I don't know. Yeah, this is the big problem with Google and education for Microsoft because people get used mm -hmm. to whatever, whatever they, they use, use and then they yeah. expect it where they go. And right. The, mm -hmm. Let's face it, the world we live in, you're going to get what you expect. <laughs> um, <laughs> right? I mean, we don't, um, I don't think we require office skills when we hire people. Yeah, right. most places don't anymore, no. I feel like. I mean, I remember seeing that in the old days. You know, must know Microsoft Office, right. must know Excel. Yeah. Right. I don't right. think we, we, we say that anymore. Hmm. Times have changed, haven't they? They have. They must have. know how to use HoloLens. Must know <laughs> the bloom gesture. <laughs> I'm going to test you a lot of that. <laughs> what does this mean? I do that. I, I, I do that when I talk anyway. It's just yeah, a, it's you a do. Thing. Yeah. Hey, hey. 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 <laughs> What's the matter, you? It's so funny. We, uh, you know, this, in this, we watched The Sopranos, of course, when they came out. Now this new movie, the prequel, right. Many Saints of Newark, which is great. And there's a thing they all do. Hey, ooh. <laughs> when you do something, <laughs> yeah. oh. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. I just want to do it. Every time somebody does something, I want to oh. <laughs> And everyone's named Polly. Polly. <laughs> You know what's great in the many saints is like you see the young Polly Walnuts, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you Does see the young the Silvio. What's funny is uh, Silvio, his hair starts falling out, and then he gets a toupee. He's turning into Silvio before your eyes. It's yeah, hysterical. Yeah, nice. yeah. Love it. Love that kind of stuff. Uh, Microsoft Cloud for financial services. That sounds like something Always. that could be big business. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be a quick mention also. So just a reminder, Microsoft's building all these vertical clouds, like healthcare cloud, retail cloud, manufacturing cloud, and the financial services cloud. So all, what these things are, are they are, are bundles of Azure Dynamics 365, Microsoft 365, plus all these different templates and APIs that Microsoft's building specific to vertical industries. Um, and they're selling that together as a bundle. It's kind of interesting because, you know, how people always get after them about, why don't you break out Azure as a separate number when you report your earnings? This is why. <laughs> they're trying to make Microsoft Cloud a thing, yeah. not just like a term, right? They're trying to make it so when you go to Microsoft to buy something, you don't just buy Azure. You buy the cloud. You buy the whole thing, the right? The whole thing. And that's what this is. This is for financial services. So it has a lot of modules specific to banking needs, um, like account protection, warding off bot attacks, um, all those kinds oh, of things that banks care a lot about. Oh. 
And they're all part of it. And you can kind of mix and match the pieces and get the pieces that you want. And then with partners, customize it for your bank so that not every bank is running the same cloud. Uh, this is going to be available November 1st. They they keep saying they have even more clouds coming for vertical markets. So yeah, I think we're going to see a lot more of these and see them sell cloud stuff this way. Just worth a quick mention for people in, in, interested and invested in the Microsoft cloud stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Did, what government business do they have now? I know I know Jedi's gone. Yeah. Well, they have a lot of government contracts. That that big Hololens one they have Holo, the, the IMR army system. Har Army's using Hololens. That's right. Yeah. That's double the size of the Jedi contract. Um, Isn't that interesting? That's a huge contract. Yeah. yeah. And then they they've got and a Amazon lot of Amazon can't say, "Hey, wait a minute. Uh, you could use our <laughs> virtual reality. Never mind." Yeah. <laughs> they have a lot of you know other ones. It, it just it won't come with a screen. The first version. And yeah. then, uh, right. Right. They, no, Microsoft has a huge imagine huge if you will. <laughs> Microsoft Government Cloud, um, they have all kinds of things. Yeah. 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 The, Microsoft's uh, cloud business is pretty solid. I know Amazon's the leader. It but is. Boy, Microsoft looks yeah. pretty solid. They're a good burger. They're number king, two. You know? And, and, yep. yeah. And, and honestly, I thought maybe Google would come along and really dominate yeah. in this sector. No. Nobody's going to So, by the way, trying. same thing with Google in smart home stuff. Like, yeah. I thought they would blow Amazon out yeah. of the water, but same Amazon thing. just. Yep. Cranked up the knob. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's good. If everything were predictable, yeah, yeah. they wouldn't need us. Sure. <laughs> uh, all right, Mary Jo, I put it off as long as possible. Go have some blueberry compote swirls. I will. Uh, wow. And while, <laughs> while you're doing I didn't that, send you a cat, I didn't send you a cat video this week. I'm sorry. Oh, I did you? Have you been right sending here. him, sending her cat? Videos? I sent her one last week. I hope you watched it. It's fantastic. <laughs> oh, so. I did. Oh, it was hilarious. Oh, it's right, basically you? cats attacking people. It's really funny. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> you can enjoy Mary Jo because it's <laughs> uh, cats going to town on dogs, which is amazing. <laughs> I love that. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, because there's a couple things going on here. So uh, Phil Spencer. I almost said Phil Spector. <laughs> Microsoft's Phil the Spencer. Late Phil be, Spencer. Yes. Yeah, not to be confused with that guy. Um, uh, told a publication called The Wrap that he now expects the uh, shortages with Xbox consoles to extend into next year. No, I've surprise, just given I mean. up. I have given up. Yeah, he 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 kind of positioned this in an interesting fashion though, because it's. I think the notion of a chip shortage is confusing enough, but he kind of framed it as a supply chain problem. Uh, which which is more than just chips, right? It's like this is a whole. I think that's like, more accurate. Yeah, I think that's it makes more sense, right? Because mm -hmm. there's a whole system that has to get this stuff yes. out to every endpoint, and it's not just making a chip and putting it in a bag. Like you know, there's, I, there's more to it. This um, this I actually came up on the radio show because I was trying to debunk the notion that there's yeah. thousands of container ships docked off LA <laughs> yes, or yes. not being offloaded for a variety of conspiratorial reasons like, well, they want yeah. us to think there's a shortage or something. And in sure. fact, it's not the case. They're loading them, uh, unloading them as fast as they can and as fast as they ever have. But the but it's a supply chain. The supply chain is so jammed that it's yep. a the, there's a bottleneck. So they can unload them, but there's nowhere to put it. So they don't unload them until they've got somewhere to, to uh, trucks to put it on. It's a very complex thing. It's not about a lack of longshoremen or a lack of delivery. It's a whole sure. chain. Nobody wants to work, Leo. You know that's it's what it that is. It's that one. They say that too. It's not it's that. Crazy. It really is that consumer demand went through the roof during pandemic. Right. And yeah. all of a sudden- The system was very fragile. Yeah. And I, we just yeah. didn't know it. You know? Yeah. And everything's it's choked as they right. try to fulfill that demand. Yeah. I thought I thought it was smart of him to do that. It's because a, I, I think a better it, ac accurate, yeah. Well, because you hear chip shortage and you think, okay, well, let's say there's a chip shortage, right? So you, you've got all these things that need chips. It, it, where does Xbox fall on the list? They're pretty low on the list, right? I mean, even compared to like other video game companies, they're low on the list. Like, uh, But it's not that, it's a lot more complex than that. It's not just about- It's a complex uh, thing, exactly. Yeah, it's a hard computer science problem. Yeah, yeah. So there's that. Um, and then it's disappointing. Uh, I really wanted to get, really wanted well, that's to get actually, one. that's what he literally says. Like the big disappointment here is because the people want this and can't get it. This was already described as the best Xbox launch in history. Imagine how much more monumental it would have been if there were no issues getting the consoles out to people. Yeah. You know, they literally would have been, well, that's, they could have sold any number of them. That, they could have that's been. exactly the point. 
which is yeah. it's not that they, they their supply is so constrained we can't sell. No, more people than ever have been buying them. <laughs> Right. <laughs> the, the, the whole pipeline is just swamped because we're buying, yeah. we're all this money that we're not spending on eating I, so out and traveling or whatever this, is going to things like consoles. Try to buy a car, folks. Have you tried Can't to buy get a car? car? <laughs> Can't get a car. I was uh, pumping gas the other day and I, a, a kitty corner across from an enterprise uh, that we go to for car rentals, which we've had to use for, you know, a car gets in an accident or we need a car to drive Kelly to school, whatever. This parking lot is always been f completely full. And I'm just pumping gas. I'm not really paying attention. But I'm looking across the street. There wasn't a single car in the parking lot. Yeah. I'm like, they don't have any cars. There's no cars. <laughs> like, there's, there are no cars. I It is, there's something going on. Lisa, and it's not aliens. Lisa bought an uh, um, electric Cooper uh, two, almost three months ago. And they called, yeah. it was supposed to come by now. And they called and said, yeah, it's going to be another month or two. Um, right. Can't get them. Yeah. yeah, same thing with my neighbor. His, his car purchase has been pushed back. Yeah. Uh, past, I think, the end of the year now, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. So it's a whole bunch of, you know, it's a constellation of things. Uh, yep. But it's frustrating. It takes a village to screw up this badly, Leo. It's, I, uh, <laughs> I, ended up, it's uh, I ended up buying Diablo yeah. 2 on my Xbox One. You know, what can I say? Actually, wow. it still looks really good. Boy, does it look good. Wow. Brings back memories. I, I was trying to figure out, when did I play this? It was 20 years ago. Yeah. It's almost 20 years old. I would have guessed Diab Diablo 1 or 2. 2. Two. Came out so in two thousand. No, two thousand one or two. Okay. Um, I think I looked it up. Um, it's still top down too, right? Too. Oh yeah, it's a, it's it's yeah. top down, but they've really <laughs> cleaned up the, the the resurrected. They've really cleaned up the um, graphics, so it's really it's sure. it's actually fun. Although yeah, it came out in two thousand. But okay. what but what's changed is uh, gaming, and so it feels a little dated. It's like, oh yeah, right. that was fun. I remember. Back when, back when yeah, a lot of grinding, <laughs> way back when, yep. yeah. What do you call that kind of a game? Like a dungeon crawler? It's a dungeon it's really crawler. A smash. You, it's a dungeon fighter. Almost, well, really. but it's... yeah, but the loot drops are the big thing. <clears throat> okay. So you spend a lot of time. I forgot how boring this was. Right. Bringing stuff back to the town, selling it, going back, getting more, <laughs> yeah, selling back it, and forth, back, and back and forth. I hate that stuff. So. What you need is flight simulator in there so you could fly back. Fly. I could fly. <laughs> and I could see the Eiffel Tower yeah. on the way. It'd be great. Mm -hmm. And crash into it like I do, like an idiot. <laughs> no, you do it on purpose. Admit it. No, I'm trying. I want to get under that thing. <laughs> well, I could yeah. do it in real life. I'm positive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not crashing on purpose. I'm trying to fly under it. Okay, fine. Right. right. Uh, Game Pass titles for October are out. Yeah, so, you know, twice a month, typically, they announce what's coming for that, for, you know, half of the month. Um, bunch of games uh, through the 15th. The big one to me is one I had not heard of before. It's called Back for Blood, which sounds a lot like Left for Dead. And it is. It's the same oh, team wow. that made it. So it's a, a first-person shooter zombie game. This looks awesome. I'm actually, this is one I'm going to actually try. Four-player cooperative narrative campaign, competitive multiplayer. Sounds and good. And you can play as a zombie if you want. Oh, that's, actually, I have to say. that's a nice sounds, twist. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. Sounds, that's neat. And that one's coming, I think, on the... Let me look you have to move here. really slowly. <laughs> no, these are the fast zombies. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. This is like the... Uh, yeah, it's not the Dawn of the Dead <laughs> that zombies. Be, that would be so bad. Yeah. <laughs> You're playing a video you game. Just keep getting killed. You just walk around, slowly around. and get killed. You go... Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> would make uh, Diablo 2 look interesting by comparison. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, and not a big deal, but Xbox Cloud Gaming, formerly X Cloud, which is a feature of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, is now in. I guess by the time of the announcement, it's a little different, but as of today, is available in Brazil, Mexico, Australia, and Japan. And Japan's actually a big one, um, especially that was announced at the Tokyo Game Show, I guess, last week. And neat. What else we got? Oh, Forza. For, Forza. Forza. That's my Forza. favorite one. Yeah, I liked it. Forza. Forza. Can I pack the car as well as drive it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what happens. <laughs> I love it when you. So, I love it when that happens. Forza, <laughs> Forza Horizon Five. For, Forza Horizon <laughs> is the arcadey version of Forza, the racing game. Yeah, coming out on the PC this fall. Uh, they've released the minimum recommended and ideal hardware requirements. Nothing dramatic. Um, I, I don't know why you would ever play this on a machine with four gigs of RAM, but that is the minimum. But you know, eight to sixteen gigs of RAM. 110 gigs of storage, preferably SSD. 
Uh, video cards are kind of mid-range, nothing special. Uh, GTX 1070 or AMD Radeon RX 590, et cetera, et cetera. So nothing surprising there. But um, Forza Horizon 5 will be better on the PC in some ways because it supports uh, 21 by 9 ultra-wide displays, steering wheel controllers, haptic feedback on the controller, yada, yada, yada. So if you're a PC gamer, that's cool. Um, I didn't write this one up uh, yet. I probably won't, I guess. But in addition to Call of Duty, what is the Call of Duty game called? <laughs> um, Vanguard. Um, there is a new Battlefield coming. Uh, and this one's a futuristic game. So it's Battlefield 2042. There is an open beta on, if you're an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate member, you get EA Play, remember, for free as part of that too. That's part of the whole game. Um, Xbox Cloud Gaming. I don't know why I can't remember these names. Uh, Xbox, it's a whole part of that experience. Um, so there's an open beta of that that starts literally today. And I might actually check that out just to kind of see what that's all about. Um, Battlefield has always had kind of a different vibe to it than uh, Call of Duty, but you never know. So that's interesting. But then the biggest story, and thank God this one does not include Microsoft. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Amazon's Twitch service, this is the big gaming service, has been hacked. And when I say hacked, I mean like literally Every everything. asset they have has been stolen and published. Source code. Online. Yeah, to everything. How it's much crazy. streamers make. Yep. And by the way, 80 of those people make over a million dollars. I know. Yeah. There I were, uh, I don't know, 10 to 20 that made several million dollars. There are a couple of chess grandmasters who make like a quarter million a year. That's incredible. And it used to be it, chess grandmasters were the most down at heel people ever because they there was no way you'd make money. Yeah. You'd have to give lessons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, now they're millionaires, right. thanks to things like Twitch. But yeah, this is huge. I actually changed this my is, password. I put on two factor. That's the so that's the big advice. Um, go into Twitch settings in the client and enable two factor authentication. That will prevent people if they have gotten your password from being able to access your account. Yeah, I immediately. That's, did by that. the way, two factor or. <laughs> Two-step, two-factor authentication, that's just job one when it comes to security. But this, there's going to be a lot more that comes out of this. This, I don't know if this is going to destroy the service. I mean, this is, this is big. Like, this is really, really bad. 125 gigs. And the thing is, yep. unlike a lot of other attacks, uh, they didn't ransom it. They didn't, uh, they're not they dribbling it out. It. They just published it. It's all on 4chan. Yeah. It's boom. It literally was uh, by someone who just hates Twitch. <laughs> like, that was literally... Yeah, the attacker said they wanted to fo quote, foster more disruption and competition yep. in the online video streaming place uh, space. And because Twitch's community is, quote, a disgusting, toxic cesspool. Right. Wow. I mean, look, so is Twitter, but. So is everything. I don't know. That's yeah, called, it's everything that's online, called, Facebook. Yeah, that's called yeah. the world. Um, right. I don't know if there's a streaming platform that is not a toxic cesspool. That's a fair point. Yep. That's a fair point. <laughs> uh, I see a shocking. lot of hate on Xbox Live. I will. I can say that for sure. Everywhere. So people, humans are awful, and when they can yeah. be anonymously awful, oh, and no consequences, no consequences, no punch in the nose. Imminent. <laughs> it's just the best. Oof, they go. Yeah. And it's. Yep. I think it's young people who have yet to learn that. You know, there's a. Oh personal no, I'm terrible online, too, Leo. It's not just no. Young people. You, <laughs> are you really? Are you really? Yes. Hey, I Call block of Duty, I'm, every a, week. I'm a monster. <laughs> yeah. play videos. Duty. I'm the worst. Yeah. Really? Are you? Oh, I will haunt you for the rest of your life if you steal one of my kills. I. Yeah, I'm terrible. Everyone's terrible. You have to be terrible. How else could you do it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Call of Duty my... is the game that took a game called Team Deathmatch and turned it into a game that you compete against the people you're teamed with. Uh, it's it is wow. just there is no there's no. Uh, can, you know, niceness occurring. In, I just want to say my Valheim stream on <laughs> Twitch, Valheim primetime, is G-rated. It's very wow. mild. Well, there's a little bit of killing of, uh, you know, goblins yeah. and things. But other than sure. that. That's okay. That's a that's a guilt-free kill. Yeah. Right it's not a very bloody game. Mostly I'm just cooking and building. It's like really boring. <laughs> I haven't streamed lately because I've been spending so much time cooking. I don't, I don't understand the games you play, but that's okay. It's so boring. It's, okay. it's something oh, for everybody. It's not for everybody. Yeah, it's uh, it is. It's Minecraft for Vikings, is what it is. It's grown up Minecraft. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, that's a that Twitch story. That's tough. Mm. I, I, think, Holy I, I, moly. I think more is going to come out over time. It's it's not good. And you, it, it actually hurts my uh, Amazon because 
they're an Amazon service. I know. Right. If mm -hmm. Amazon can't keep that stuff yep. safe. Well, you know what, though? So I, this is going to be part of the story. Um, I don't know how Twitch was run. It could have been like LinkedIn, right? They could have had their own thing going on. So who knows? Um, yeah. Hopefully this doesn't point to problems with uh, Amazon's broader infrastructure. God. Well, yeah, we I mean, Twitch goes back. It was old. It was Justin TV. Remember? Yeah. You know, we knew Justin. That's where Justine started. She was uh, she was a stream early streamer on Justin TV. Um, so uh, AWS is used to host and deliver content for Twitch oh boy. TV. Oh right. boy. And you know, right? But one, we don't. I, but you know what I mean? Like, I, I, they might have their own. Well, security infrastructure. In, in addition, who knows what, yeah. I'm betting yeah. that those that data was stored on an in S3 buckets. This is yeah. is yeah. very could common. be bad. Yeah, it could be really bad. Yeah. Very well, common. It's really you bad. See this. It's really bad as it is. And it's their fault. You S3 buckets can be left unsecured. So <clears throat> right. whoever was there, you know, sysadmin left it unsecured. Probably, I'm guessing, because you see S3 bucket uh, drops all the time. But it can be secured. It's just they probably didn't do it right. Or maybe they had an insider. Well, I bet they'll do it right going forward. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's the problem. Uh, All that stuff should be encrypted. Right. So yeah. your source code? Really? Yeah. I know. I know. Holy that's, that's bad. incredible. Wow. Like literally their yeah. source code to everything. To everything. All of their source code. Mm. Code related to proprietary SDKs and internal AWS services used by Twitch. This, well. this, this source code to services they never released, like Vapor, which was going to be a Steam <sighs> competitor. Um, Holy cow! I, I, the, yeah, no, this the the this is gonna get it's terrible, but I I bet the ultimate story is even worse. It's really bad. Hmm. Um, uh, somebody, uh, uh, chief research officer at Veracode, just tweeted the Twitch passwords. It looks as if they were stored using salted SSA SSA one or bcrypt, which would be good, I think. Okay. Yeah, um, I, it did. Yeah, the, the initial story did say that the passwords are encrypted, but. You know, again, just as a, this this should be the little nudge everyone needs to turn on two FA. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I did. And you should have it on. Yeah, I changed my password to another yeah. really long one. I don't yeah. want anybody stealing my Valheim Prime Time. <laughs> <laughs> Twitch.tv slash Club Twit. Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, not today. Wait, wait. A no, day. not now. No, I'm not yeah, doing. No, don't I haven't do it today. in ages. Don't. Actually, um, I I got to. I got to get back to it. Let's take a little break. When we come back, we will do the back of the book, the tips, the tricks, the code names, and the beer. The Ooh, perfect timing. <laughs> if you like, if you like, yeah. what, what was that? Blue blueberry compote blueberry. swirls. Blueberry <laughs> compote swirls. I don't think that was it. You I, will I love this exactly. beer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was it. Oh uh, boy. Our show today brought to you by Plex Track, the purple teaming platform, uh, a security management platform probably is better. In fact, boy, maybe Twitch ought to look into this. Uh, it, <laughs> Plex Track brings you better reports, deeper assessments, more in t insights. If you're spending hours and hours reporting security issues and you feel like it's getting you nowhere, if you're buried in data but still can't get a full picture of your security posture, to prioritize your remediation effort, this is a solution for you. PlexTrack empowers continuous assessment, automated workflow, and effective collaboration between teams to help cybersecurity professionals do more in less time. But, you know, when you hear about these breaches, you realize this is, you have the toughest job in the world. But you can, there's help is available. PlexTrack makes your life easier because you're doing less paperwork, doing more of the stuff that, that really makes a difference, right? Create assessment reports in half the time. Centralize your remediation efforts across all your scans and assessments and audits through powerful risk visualizations, uh, scanner and ticketing in integrations, and enhanced analytics to effectively communicate risks in real time. Whether you're on the red team or the blue team, there's a Plex track for every security professional to save time and get the work done right. And right now. And boy, uh, after Facebook on Monday and Twitch on Wednesday, there is probably a little heightened awareness, shall we say, in the front office. Maybe you could talk to them about getting Plex track. Now would be the time. 
If you're on the red team, you'll love it because you can import findings from pretty much every vulnerability scanner out there. And, and when you do it, you can include screenshots and videos, and it formats automatically. It's beautiful. You'll spend less time typing, more time doing the stuff that makes the difference. You can create customized templates. You can export it to Word with a click. Uh, streamline the entire report writing process. You'll deliver better reports faster. Saves you time, but it's also great for the blue team because better reports means it's e their job is easier. Blue teams can do a lot with PlexTrack, too. They can customize internal and external assessment questionnaires, synchronize findings with task management tools like Jira Cloud, assign findings to team members, track status over time so you make sure the important jobs are getting done. And this is really important but very useful. Provide attestation of your security posture with robust analytics. Bring that to the C-suite. They'll, they'll, they'll appreciate it, trust me. Of course, it all comes down to results, and PlexTrack helps you do your job better so you get better results. Whether you're with a small to medium-sized security consultancy, maybe you're a full-scale MSSP, maybe you're a large enterprise, doesn't matter. Security teams of all sizes and specialties will work more effectively and more efficiently with PlexTrack. PlexTrack, P-L-E-X-T-R-A-C, it's the premier cybersecurity workflow management and reporting platform for every professional from practitioner to CISA. There's truly a Plex track for every security team. Trust me, you want this. You can get a demo right now. Plex track improves the entire security engagement lifecycle, making it easy to generate security reports, deliver them securely, track the issues to completion straight from the platform. But once you see the demo, you're going to want it. I got to tell you, try it free for a month. And see how PlexTrack can change your life as a security professional. All you have to do is go to PlexTrack.com slash twit. Again, so important you use that address so that they know we sent you, right? PlexTrack.com slash twit. Claim your free month, P-L-E-X-T-R-A-C dot com slash T-W-I-T. Thank you, PlexTrack. And I know you'll be thanking PlexTrack, too, when you start using it in your uh, remediation efforts. So important these days. PlexTrack.com slash twit. Back of the book time. We'll kick it off with Paul. Yeah. Paul little Pauly Walnuts Therot. <laughs> Pauly um, Compote. That's what we're going to call you. <laughs> Pauly Pomegranate. Pauly Pomegranate. Oh, I like it. Nice. Little Pauly um, Pomegranate. <laughs> So we talked about the start menu and how it's not quite as sophisticated as it could be, but there, there's one change you can make that might be meaningful to you today, and I, I've made it. I, I don't like that new app show up and recommended. I kind of wish that I don't would like show it up either. in the app section of the yeah, top. Yeah, you can turn that off. And so if you go into settings and personalization, start the top option there is uh, show recently added apps. And actually, let me just go in there. I want to turn off and recommended. Then, that uh, oh you want to turn it for a recommend yeah so there's no <laughs> I know no well, way to do again, that huh? I okay. I feel like eventually we're gonna kind of get to this um, you can also turn off most used apps I, I don't know where those would appear I guess they probably appear in recommended I I've not seen that yet but you can turn both of those off and that will at least give you a recommended section that is just what Mary Jo and I want which is just recent documents which you know, I guess that's I wish, okay. Like, I wish we could make it bigger. And I turn that off on all my operating systems. I just, I, I just, yeah. I don't know why. I, I guess you guys are writers. You're always going back to the same doc. So maybe that's why. Mm. For me, it's not. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't I, know. Yeah, I go back. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The other one is I don't, I don't know if this actually was released today, but today, tomorrow, someday soon, uh, Stardock is going to issue a major update to Start 11, which was only fairly recently announced in the first place and is something they're uh, in you know progress developing uh, obviously start 11 is a start menu replacement it works with windows 10 and 11 but the neat thing about it is you aside from all the obvious stuff you choose different start menu types and everything it gives you back or it will give you back this new um this new release some of the features we've lost in windows uh, 11 you can move the start button over to the left of the taskbar even if the other buttons are centered for example you can customize this uh the taskbar uh, including moving it around to all the edges of the screen. What a unique idea that maybe Microsoft should look into. Um, you can also access Task Manager when you right, right click the taskbar. Cool. Um, and you can also customize the Start Menu itself, of course, as you would expect from a Start Menu replacement. Um, different themes. Uh, you can go to a compact Windows 7 version. You can make it look like Windows 10 if you want, all that kind of stuff. So Starduck is really good about this kind of stuff. 
they don't charge a lot of money for it either. So start start eleven is four ninety nine. If you want to wait until it's you know fully complete, that's fine. But um, today, tomorrow, whatever, there should be a brand new version. Um, you know, any day now. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. If you do move to Windows eleven, you feel yourself a little constricted by some of Microsoft's simplic simplifications. Simplifications. You know, simple. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Uh, Brad's doing his job. Yes. Yep. Have you yeah, talked actually, to him? Is, oh, you talk to him every, is, every week for or talk to him for, yeah, every day for a string deal. Yeah. yeah. He is the person. He's happy over there. Be. You know, I, I hope he isn't uh, kind of. No, of course. Yeah, I know. I think he's too. He's <laughs> bastard. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is a bastard. Yeah, he's no, a he's bastard. A, um, he'll, do, he'll do good. Yeah, but I mean, clearly he took, play, took it was the right time to go to Starhawk. Yeah. I think, yeah. you know. I know. Yep. Holy cow. Well, a big part of it is you can work virtually now. And I think oh, nice. yeah. this is something he might have done in the past, but he would have had to have moved to wherever they are in Michigan or whatever. Ah, uh, mm. nice. All right, good. You know, winter's terrible enough in Ohio, so um, <laughs> yeah, I can work from home. Good. Yep. Mary Jo Foley, let's kick things off with your enterprise pick of the week. Right. So we mentioned that most enterprises probably won't be adopting Windows 11 right away. But here's, here's the surprising thing. Microsoft is acting like they will, and they're already making all the usual deployment tools for businesses, like their new group policy options, their um, Microsoft Intune settings, all this stuff, um, available to businesses so that they can start managing their employees' Windows 11 deployments. And one of the big ones, they often kind of lag a little bit in delivering, but it's out now, is called the Windows 11 Security Baseline. So every time uh, Microsoft puts out a new version of Windows, they put out this thing called the Security Baseline. And what that is is a group of Microsoft recommended and tested security settings, um, and they go through each one and explain what the security impact is so that you don't have to go as an IT pro through all the different possible settings and figure out what things you should turn on and what things you don't need. Um, so this is already out as of, I think, yesterday or today. If so, if, you, if you're somebody in an enterprise who may be starting to test Windows 11 or have a small group of, of your employees on Windows 11, you can go get the security baseline right now. Okay. Surprising. Surprising. Hey, hey. <laughs> Get your security baseline here. Right now. <laughs> code name of the week. Okay. So here's a code name I have stumbled upon that I don't know a lot about, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. Um, and maybe anyone who's listening who knows more can throw some more information my way. The code name is Beluga. And um, Beluga has to do with the Microsoft... Web XT team. So the Web XT team is the folks who do Bing, MSN, and Edge. Um, they're the people who brought you the widgets in Windows 11. If you like them or hate them, blame the Web X team. Web XT team. You know where they live, Mary Jo? Can we find them? Uh, yeah, I, I would like to know. Um, <laughs> so this Beluga thing has to do with quote, delivering new customer experiences, which might mean more widgets or different kinds of widgets. It might mean something completely different. Um, and the people they're looking for to join the team have to do with, um, are, are, people, are people who have experience in looking through documents and user usage patterns to figure out what kind of data uh, that points to in terms of developing future products. So it sounds like it may be something at the very early stages, uh, but as I note in my in my entry here, it's going to be a whale of a project. Get it, Beluga? Oh boy, that's uh, tough. Uh, 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 uh. Or maybe it has to do with caviar. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe caviar. it's like it they're going to send out caviar <laughs> to as our next Windows 12 giveaway. Maybe who knows? Right now with dark <laughs> mode, like this. Fine now with dark caviar. mode caviar. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take that, by the way. Yeah, really, it's a good idea. Let's do again. that. Yeah, forget Justine. Yeah. <laughs> I like caviar, too. Yeah. <laughs> Time for a perfect beer uh, of the week. Right. I know, we're staying in the blue theme today. Um, so today's pick is a blueberry beer. And if you've ever had blueberry beers, a lot of them are really sweet and 
like tastes like fake blueberries, which is not optimal. Ew. But this yeah. one that is my pick today from Transmitter in Brooklyn called the S1X Wild Blueberry Saison mm. is perfect. It tastes like a Saison. First off, it still tastes like a beer. It's very dark purple. It does have some blueberry flavor, but totally not sweet. And the way they make it is interesting. They take macerated whole wild blueberries and they add them to another beer that was one of their original beers called the S1 Mahogany Saison. And then they ferment it together and they oh. turn it into what they call a dark fruited beer. When you taste this, if you ha if you tasted this blindfolded, you might think it was Beaujolais. That's kind of what it tastes like. It wow. doesn't taste it doesn't taste like a typical beer or a typical Saison. Um it can't, like some people who've never had it before, they're like, wow, it tastes like wine. Um, wow. But I think that's just, it's just the wild blueberries and Did the how they owner tr this. macerate this himself or how does that happen? Uh, <laughs> hopefully not. I know the owner and I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, I had, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to taste this recently. It was really good. Like if you like blueberry oh. beer and you can find this anywhere, Transmitter S1X Wild Blueberry Saison, really worth seeking it out. Nice. And yes, nice. it's blue, just like the the um, Bloomberry ice cream. Very similar purplish blue color. Like a slushy. Like a slushy. <laughs> like a raspberry slushy. Not thick like that though. No, no. Mm-mm. <laughs> mm-mm. Let's all go have one right now. All right, let's it's, go. Is Sa Saison, I always think of it as a summer beer, but I guess it could be a fall. Yeah, it's fall more like beer. a Belgian style, right? Yeah. Um, kind yeah. of, or like a farmhouse style. Okay. So at pretty much year round. Year for round. Those. Yep. Yeah, it's yeah. good every time. Yeah. Mary Jo Foley, she is uh, right now at allaboutmicrosoft.com, her ZDNet blog, but that's just because she isn't writing a book with Paul yet. No. No. <laughs> or ever. Uh, all about my It's Microsoft. a thankless job. I'd love to involve you in it. <laughs> no. No. Share the pain. Uh, Paul Thorat. Thorat.com is his website, of course. Become a premium member. There's lots of great stuff behind the paywall there. Highly recommend it. And, of course, his book, The Field Guide to Windows 10, is available at leanpub.com. And stay tuned, Field Guide to Windows 11. So what do you think? How soon before that comes out? I had hoped to have something by now, honestly, but I had to, I, I completely restructured the book, which in retrospect might have been a mistake. But I, I, I started with a chapter I called What's New in Windows 10, 11. And then I realized that's a huge mistake because that's like most of the book. So I, I, I chopped it up and I just kind of went back to it. I, it. It's just taking longer than I wanted to. Soon, in other words. Yeah, this year, certainly. All right. Good. No it's, more it's, no more travels it's for you until you finish your book. Uh, well, actually, I will be traveling. Oh, yeah? Where are you going? Uh, Paris at the end of the month. <gasps> they, oh, that's that overdue. song, isn't it? Halloween in Paris. No, I'll that's... be back before Halloween. but okay. <laughs> Yeah, just, cool. just before Halloween. Cool. Wow. Well, nice. That's exciting. It's a year and a half late, but yes. Yeah, I know. Well, uh, pay a visit to Notre Dame and let, let us know how the oh, uh, reconstruction will. is going. I'm curious. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, we really were desperate to be going ourselves. We'll be going to Oaxaca for Halloween. That's going to yeah, be fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. Day of the Dead. Nice. That'll be really great. That's a couple of weeks off. Yes. Uh, any events coming up that we should know about? I don't think so, right? Ignite well, is next month, <laughs> actually. Oh, yeah. So we're gonna partake in Ignite to oh, some good. degree. So okay. you'll uh, we'll have more details about that. Okay, soon. good. Yeah, good to hear. That's not till November, though. First week of November. Yeah, beginning of November. Yeah, right? yeah November. I yeah. can tell you, Mary Jo, that's not. That's just a month off. So not that. I far know. Yeah. I was looking at the calendar. I'm like, wait, so, that's only a few weeks yeah, from now. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of. Uh, I don't know what happened. I know it's creeping up. Yeah, yeah. Tw it's gonna be yeah. 2022 before you know it. I know. Okay. On that note, yeah. thank you too, and uh, keep up the good work. We will re-adjourn here, uh, resume the the broadcast, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time, next Wednesday and every Wednesday. Uh, that's 1800 UTC. Uh, you can watch us do it live at twit.tv slash live. There's live audio and video streams there. If you're watching live, chat live. The free chat is irc.twit.tv. Uh, there's also the Club Twit Chat. There's a Discord server for that. 
In fact, there's conversations going on about just about everything under the sun. <laughs> we also have ad-free versions of all of our shows uh, for Club Twit members. And we have a Club Twit Plus feed. That feed will feature our AMA with Steve Gibson, which is coming up on Friday. If you're not a member of Club Twit, you really do want to join now. Uh, get a chance to ask Steve those questions you've always wanted to ask. Um, that'll be, I'm, I'm not sure what the time is, but we'll, we'll, if you join, we'll, we'll get that to you. Um, joining Club Twit is easy, seven bucks a month. Uh, it's month to month. So, you know, you could join and quit if you want, if you just want to hear Steve. Uh, Club Twit is at twit.tv slash Club Twit for all the information there. Paul and I will be going on a cruise in a year, mm -hmm. July 2022. Yep. Gosh, that's creeping up too. That's going to be here before yeah, we know I it. I got to pick my excursions. I will uh, send you the list of excursions. In fact, I want to publish it on the uh, feed because yeah. uh, I think there are people who want to go on the excursions with us. We're going to keep do meaning to some photos. This, tours. Right. Oh, wait, wait till you see the thing. Oh yeah. my gosh, there are the excursions look fantastic. Yep. So uh, you know, we're going to definitely do some photo walks. There's a cocktail party to welcome you and to say mm -hmm. goodbye. Paul and Stephanie and Lisa and I will be at that. Uh, yeah. And of course, we're doing a lecture at some point in the middle. And then I think we're going to do some other events, kind of informally. Sure. Um, I hope Stephanie will do a little mixology thing. Oh, she totally will. Yeah, yeah. that'll be fun. Uh, for more information about that, it's an Alaska cruise on Holland America. Uh, July, I think, 22nd. But it, you, details are at cruise.twit.tv. It's a one-week cruise. We'd love to have you aboard. It'll be a lot of fun. All Twit fans. Club Twit at twit.tv slash club twit. And even if you're not a member, that's fine. Cruise.twit.tv. Uh, we have on-demand uh, copies of the show at our website, twit.tv slash ww. We also have... Um, a YouTube channel dedicated to Windows Weekly. You can watch the videos there. Best thing to do, subscribe in your favorite podcast client. That way you'll get it automatically the minute it's available. Uh, and uh, if that podcast client should allow reviews, please leave us a five-star review. Let the world know about Windows Weekly, about Paul and Mary Jo and the great job they do. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye. If you find yourself talking to those virtual assistants in your house quite often, or maybe you can make your light turn on and off with the touch of a button, well, Smart Tech Today is the show for you. Join Matthew Casanelli and myself, Micah Sargent, every week as we talk all about smart stuff and the fun that comes along with it.